live from Germantown Civic Club Complex, it's GHS TV's live coverage of the 43rd Annual Germantown Festival, the largest arts and crafts festival in the Mid-South. And now, here are your hosts, McLean Mayers and Sydney Armstrong. Hello and welcome to GHS TV's live coverage of the 43rd Annual Germantown Festival. I'm Sydney Armstrong. And I'm McLean Mayers. It's the weekend after Labor Day here at the Germantown Civic Club Complex and that means only one thing, Germantown Festival. We're just a short walk from our studios at Germantown High School in the heart of Old Germantown. Over 400 artisans from across the country have made their way to the grounds, selling some of the most unique merchandise you'll discover anywhere. You'll also find local organizations and civic groups offering up everything from frozen treats to antique automobiles. Before the festival closes tonight at 6, as many as 50,000 people will have made their way through the grounds. But if you can't make it out to the grounds today, no problem. We have your all-access pass right here on GHS TV. We'll have one-on-one -on -one interviews with over 25 guests from around the area. We'll be visiting with them to learn all about what their organizations have planned for the upcoming season. We have some fun and very interesting interviews lined up for today. Today's show will also feature five talented entertainers that will, per will perform on our very own GHS TV entertainment stage. We'll chat with each of them after their performance, so please stay with us. Our team of six reporters will cover every inch of the Germantown Civic Club complex to showcase all that the Germantown Festival has to offer, and just about how much amusement can be found in one afternoon here at the grounds. You'll get to meet a number of unique individuals and get a behind-the-scenes look at the fantastic attractions the festival provides. Speaking of attractions, McLean, <laughs> we're ready to check in right now with our two field reporters for this year's show, Kaif Galani and Hilly Bardos. They will venture all around the festival and interview many of the vendors here this year. Kaif and Haley, what have you found so far? Thanks, Sydney and McLean. Well, the festival is finally upon us, and I can't wait to see what this year has in store. Me too. Countless people have been busy getting ready to make sure this weekend's activities live up to years past. I know they won't disappoint. You know, there's been a lot of hard work going into this year's festival, and Haley and I will be going around the grounds giving you a taste of the diverse booths at this festival. The amount of possible things you can buy here is crazy. Ranging from toys to little kids to handmade, one-of-a-kind crafts, there's something here for everyone. You're right, Haley. You know, I'm really looking forward to hearing you speak to some of the unique vendors about what they have to offer. And I'm excited to see who you'll be interviewing as well. You know, no matter what your hobby or your tastes are, the festival definitely has something for everyone. Exactly. Stay tuned because we'll be broadcasting the Germantown Festival live until 5 here at GHS TV. And if you won't be by your TV, don't worry. We've got you covered. We'll also be streaming our coverage live at ghstv.org. Back to you, Sydney and McLean. Thanks, Kaif and Haley. We'll check in with both of our field reporters throughout today's live show. As we mentioned earlier, today's show will feature live musical performances throughout the afternoon from our very own entertainment stage located on the festival grounds. Dr. Lily Afshar is a remarkable classical guitarist and professor at the University of Memphis Rudy E. Scheidt School of Music. She has won numerous awards and has gained fame for her technical precision and skill. She has over 55,000 followers on Facebook and is now here on our entertainment stage ready to perform for us. Here's Lily Afshar playing Missionaire. <laughs>
That was Missionera played by Lily Afshar. We're going to talk with Miss Afshar in just a moment. Right now, it's time to head back out to the festival grounds where our field reporter Haley Bardos is with one of the many vendors here at the Germantown Festival. Show us what you found, Haley. Thanks, McLean. Do you like to add an extra kick to your food? If so, I found some heat here at the grounds with Pappy Joe's pepper sauce. How long have you guys been coming to the festival? Uh, this is our second year to do the festival. Um, we just come down to spread a little spice and a little heat in people's lives. How did you guys start making hot sauce? What inspired you to do that? Well, Pappy Joe likes to eat peppers. So he was growing a lot of peppers and he grew this particular pepper, a little short pepper, and it's not edible. It's so hot. It's an organic Tabasco pepper. And he decided to make a sauce with it. So here we are. It developed into this. Where do you get the ingredients for the sauce? Well, Pappy grows his own organic Tabasco peppers and uh, then it's got vinegar and uh, various other ingredients as well. Can you tell me about some of the recipes that you can use this sauce for? Oh yes, we have a sauce maker. When you purchase a bottle, you get a recipe card. It's got seven recipes on it from everything from um, deviled eggs to corn dip, but our, our signature is the cheesy bacon dip and everybody loves it. When they, usually when they buy it, and when they taste it, they buy it. It looks delicious. <laughs> um, where can people find this sauce if they can't make it out to the grounds today? Well, we're located in um, Collierville on the square at um, Brooks Collection, Silver Caboose, Dixie Pickers in the mall at Bazaar, which is also here today. And um, then we're downtown on Bill Street at A. Schwab's on the island at uh, Miss Cordelia's. Uh, Whole Foods has it. So there's a variety of places. So you can go to our website, pappyjoes.com, and get both the recipes and locations where we can be purchased. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. For one-of-a-kind hand-bottled hot sauce, come on over to Pappy Joe's Pepper Sauce booth. But caution may be addictive. Back to you, McLean. Thanks for that interview, Haley. We are looking forward to seeing what you and Kate discover throughout today's show. Right before Haley's report, we heard Lily Afshar on her entertainment stage. She joins us now. Welcome, Dr. Afshar. Welcome. Thank you so much. We're so glad you're here. So you did not grow up in the United States. Could you tell me where you grew up? Yes, I grew up in Tehran, Iran, mm -hmm. and that, that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. And when I was 17, I finished high school, I came to the United States. Okay, here. so how were you introduced to the guitar? I fell in love with the guitar uh, by listening to a record uh, and by listening my cousin take a lesson, mm -hmm. a classical guitar especially, which is the style I play. Okay, so. yeah. Now, was there a specific moment when you when you wanted to pursue this as a career? Yes, uh, actually, uh, when I came to the States, I, I found out about Boston Conservatory. I found out that they offer guitar for a Bachelor of Music degree. That's when I enrolled there and continued it. Okay, so it says on your website that when you were 10 years old, I'm assuming that's when you saw your cousin, yes. and that you told your father that you liked the guitar and the next day you went out and bought you one. Exactly. Yeah, so it's just kind of a, just on a whim. Did he know, did he know that you were going well, to Well, I had never expressed my passion in anything else before. Oh, okay. And the way I said it, Daddy, I love the guitar, that's all I said. And he understood. Okay. Now, so obviously it came as like kind of a click, you know, like the, like the light bulb came exactly. on. Exactly. Did, did learning and taking lessons, did that come very easily to you too since you were so passionate about it? It did, yes. I was very serious about it and uh, in fact I would stay in my room practicing the guitar for hours and after hours and my father would say, come out of your room so we can play. <laughs> so it was uh, an incredible passion and I worked on it more than anybody else. Wow, that's awesome. And it's obviously paid off. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you are the first woman to ever receive her doctorate in guitar performance. So yes. how did that change your life and what steps did you take to get there? You know, I, I just decided to, that guitar is my career and I wanted to be the best I could be. Mm -hmm. 
And it just happened that uh, I was the first woman in the world to get a doctorate in guitar performance. I didn't plan it that way. After it was done, I looked around and I said, wait a minute, I'm the only one. <laughs> so it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So what brought you to the University of Memphis? Well, after I got the day after I got my doctorate, I was offered the job at the University of Memphis. Mm -hmm. They were looking for a guitar teacher mm -hmm. and I applied among 35 others who applied and I became a finalist and then they offered me the job. I had never been to Memphis before that. Okay, so are you enjoying know. it here? Yes, yeah. I love it. I've been here now for 25 years. Oh wow. So you have accomplished so much. I, I, I couldn't even <laughs> list it all, but what, what are you most proud of? Well, one is uh, getting my doctorate, you know, oh, that was yes. a big deal and being the first. One was playing for Andres Segovia, the famous mm -hmm. Spanish guitarist whom I used to listen to his records uh, as, a, as a girl, mm -hmm. you know. And I said to myself as a girl, if Segovia can do it, I can do it. So then I got accepted to play for him in 1986. That's amazing. So he was sitting right here next to me and wow. it, was, it was a big That's joy for me. Yeah. That's fantastic. We can't thank you enough for being on the show today. You're it was welcome. amazing so talking much. with you. You're welcome. Thank you. Once again, that was Lily Afshar, one of the many performers who will join us throughout the day. The German Town Festival was always music to the ears of area foodies. You've got your classics like funnel cakes and party dogs, German Town Festival originals like the quackeries, and even a, even a little international flair with grapes. There's something for everyone, and we asked festival goers to tell us about their favorite. Funnel cake. Yeah, the funnel cake. There's something about funnel cake that just makes the fair experience complete. Um, so far it's the ice cream because it's so yummy and delicious. It's so creamy and They're sweet the and I just ate these really spicy nachos. So yeah. Uh, we like the chicken on the stick. I don't know yet. Probably Germantown Commissary. Well, why would you say that? Because it's just the best barbecue there is. Barbecue nachos. Yeah, the barbecue nachos. The cherry lime. Um, I guess I like the gyros too because that's the only thing I've had. I haven't found it yet. I just got here and I'm going to walk around and find it. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, over the time of coming to the festival since I was a really little boy, I would have to say the food that reminds me the most of Germantown Festival would, of course, be the apple dumplings. Oh, my gosh. I had those for the first time yesterday. I stood in the rain for five minutes and waited, and it was <laughs> worth every delicious bite. Oh. You know, I've, I felt bad for eating, you know, all the festival food because it's not the best for you, but But so it sure is it. tasty. So that, that is one thing for sure. <laughs> Right now, let's head back out to the grounds. Field reporter Kaif Galani is live on the scene with another artisan who's spending this weekend at the Germantown Festival. Kaif, tell us what you found. Thanks, Sydney. If you can think it and they can fit it, they'll put it on a ring. That's the motto here at Debria's Designs. I'm here with Debria Sargent, owner. Hey, how are you, Debria? I'm great. It's a beautiful day. So why did you first begin making jewelry? My husband had an awesome job and he took me to Mexico. It would have been great, except for they stuck me in an apartment with no car. So I started doing wire wrap jewelry, and as I did it, I got better, and we came back to the States. And once we came back to the States, I started doing shows. Well, my husband got bored going to shows with me, and once he got bored, he started doing rings and got into carving rings. And the more he carved rings, the more our business grew, and this is where we are. So who do you make your rings for? Is it for children, for women? Who is it for? We do rings for all people. We, do them, we can go all the way down to a size 2 for little children, or we can go up to a size 16 for adults. So what type of designs do you offer? Um, our carved rings are simply hand-carved where you cut the ring. Um, as you could see a minute ago, you can see him taking a saw and cutting it. Or we do hand-stamped rings. So is this your first time at the festival? This is our third time and we hope to come back next year. What keeps you coming back? It's an awesome show and I love the people here in Germantown. And you know, if somebody wants to buy a ring but they can't make it out to the festival today, uh, is there a way they can contact you to purchase a ring? Yes, they can go to www.debriasdesigns.com. They can go to my Facebook page, also Debrias Designs, or they can call me at 479-601-2421. Thank you. So come on over to Debria's Designs if you're looking for a perfect piece for you or your loved one. Back to you, Sydney. Thanks, Kaif. Kaif Galani and our other field reporter, Haley Bardos, will be joining us throughout the show with more items you'll find here on the festival grounds until 6 p.m. this evening.
Now, in the past few years, Memphis has become a prime spot for both traveling Broadway shows and also local productions. Lee Eck from the Germantown Community Theater and Christine Torres from the Orpheum Theater are joining us today to talk about what both theaters have in store for this year. Ms. Eck and Ms. Torres, thank you so much for joining us thank you on this wonderful us. day. Now, Ms. Torres, what, what's going on at the Orpheum right now? What shows are oh my happening? Goodness, what isn't going on at the Orpheum right now? <laughs> um, we actually have, um, on Friday the 12th, we'll be opening up a special exhibit to kind of proceed Phantom of the Opera, which is opening on September 24th. Um, and we're going to have original costumes from the Phantom of the Opera on display at Carriage wow. Crossing Mall. That's so, so that's exciting. going to kind of introduce the production to Memphis since it's been almost 15 it years has, since yeah. we've seen Phantom at the Orpheum. So Yeah, but I was going to say that, you know, I remember, I mean, but I've had the chance to go backstage before and, and all the murals are there and seeing Phantom of the Opera, what does it mean to get back such a ginormous and such popular show? Oh my goodness, uh, Phantom of the Opera is actually one of the most requested shows that we ever get. And this is the first time that it's been on tour in a very long time. So yeah. we're very fortunate to have it. Um, but at the same time, this Phantom is going to be um, a little bit of a feast for the eyes, even for the people who have uh, experienced Phantom okay. many times before in that there's some new staging and new choreography, but it's still going to be the same music, the same lyrics, the same beautiful costumes that oh, everybody course. knows and loves. So um, it's going to be a little bit of a treat for first timers and for people who love the classic. Oh, I can't wait. Now, Miss Egg, <laughs> now one of my one of my favorite shows, Stephen Sondheim's Classic Company, mm -hmm. you, are, you are finishing up rehearsals and you are getting ready for opening night. Yeah. So kind of tell me what our audience what, what should audience members be expecting opening night? Um, it's it's going to be a really cool show. We're actually right now in the middle of tech, so um, I'm going to be running back over there after Busy. I talk with you guys. Yeah, um, But we're really excited about this opening our season. We're incorporating multimedia into the show, so we're using projection, um, various uh, image surfaces in the set mm -hmm. to help flesh out Bobby's inner psychosis, oh, I guess, yeah. um, because it's very much around the central character of Bobby and, and oh, yeah. the pressure from all of his married and or un unmarried friends, so it's going to be really, really cool. So McLean and I were actually there this summer picking up uh, some programs and stuff, and we saw a bunch of little kids running around yeah. and having fun on stage. What can you tell us about that? Oh, uh, well, that was, that could have been a number of things. It could have yeah. been our summer camps. We uh -huh. have a, a huge summer camp program every year. It's a, it was very successful this year. We had a great season. Um, we also do our all children's theater series every summer. So we do a musical and a non-musical for kids by kids. So oh. summertime, we're, we're chock full of kids. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, Ms. Torres, that you, while the Orpheum has these fabulous, big, extravagant Broadway shows coming, you are also very involved with the, with the education side as well. In fact, you broke ground on your new education center last year, which we actually had the chance to be there for the groundbreaking, which was wonderful. Yes. So can you kind of tell me, how is that process going, and what can kids expect when, those do when the doors open? Well, first of all, um, you know, we're hoping to open the doors sooner rather than later, probably mm -hmm. in the spring or summer, maybe fall of next year. Yeah. But if you haven't been by the Orpheum lately, I encourage you to go because the building is going up so quickly. Yeah. Um, it's great to be able to watch the progress as it happens, but this is going to allow us to expand our education programs because um, a lot of students who are involved in mm -hmm. our programs know that the Orpheum wasn't built to house the almost 20 programs that we have at the Orpheum. And so this is going to give us the space to allow us to do that, which is going to include, you know, expanded summer camps. Um, of course, we have a star council. We have high school musical theater course, awards, yeah. which you all are very familiar with. <laughs> so, um, so it's going to allow us to um, expand both our capacity and the programs that we're able to offer. So would, what is, like, I, I, I guess this is a question for more both of you, but what is your goal when you are teaching these kids? I mean, some of them have never experienced theater at all. What are some things that you want them to know about this wonderful art? Um, I, we really just want them to come away with a new appreciation for the arts in general, mm -hmm. and you know, specifically for what we do for theater. Mm -hmm. um, because if they can walk away having had an experience where they understand, they feel like they can relate to the art form, then they're going to grow into adults who may or may not continue to participate um, as a performer, maybe it's as an audience member, uh, maybe it's as a donor or a volunteer. Mm -hmm. We really think that starting with children will give them a better appreciation for it as they continue on through their lives. Right. So. And I mean, to add to that, there are so many benefits of being involved in the arts. I know that that was one of the reasons why I consider myself a successful, you know, young professional mm -hmm. because 
being in theater gave me self-confidence. It taught me teamwork. Um, you know, I'm able to articulate what I want to say <laughs> yeah. when I'm ready to say it. Um, there are just so many benefits that go beyond the arts that you can get from being involved in the arts. Yeah, and, and I think that that was going to be my follow-up question in the sense that, you know, with Star Council and with, um, and with the GCT camps, I mean, obviously you're teaching them these wonderful things. So other than these acting abilities, what are these kids coming out of these camps and these programs? What skills? Stuff that you can take on to any career, really. Yeah. Um, for example, I know that whenever I began with theater in high school, I was very shy. And I chose theater because I knew it was going to help bring me out of my shell um, because I also wanted good grades. And so that meant I was going to have to try in theater <laughs> class. But um, it really taught me to be able to get past my comfort zone. And so anytime that I've, even now, if I'm scared about going up on stage or doing a curtain speech at the Orpheum, I immediately just call on those skills that I learned back whenever I started theater when I was young. Yeah. So obviously this is, this is the very beginning of both of these long and wonderful seasons. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of tell me uh, what shows should audience be expecting? Well, after Company opens, um, our follow-up shows Agatha Christie's Go Back for Murder, which um, Coincidentally, it's going to be the first show in our new stage. We're demolitioning our stage down at the floor and creating a new platforming wow. system at GCT. So going forward, starting with Go Back for Murder, every show this season and in subsequent seasons, you're going to be a, you, you never know what you're going to walk into in our uh -huh. space. So, so we're exciting. really excited about that. We're doing Velveteen Rabbit, doing Miss Firecracker Contest by Beth Henley, All My Sons by Arthur Miller. We're really excited mm -hmm. about that. Your Good Man Charlie Brown. We have an adult cast and a youth cast. Oh, and then so we're closing fun. the season out with Fox on the Fairway by Ken wow. Ludwig. That's so we've be got a fun. got something for everybody this year. And this was? Um, well, of course, we're going to kick it off with Phantom of the Opera, mm -hmm. and then we'll go into Once the Musical, which won the 2012 Tony. It's my favorite. It's a wonderful <laughs> musical. I'm so, I'm so excited to see it on the Orpheum stage. Um, and then for the Thanksgiving holidays, we'll be doing A Christmas Story, the musical. Um, then we'll also have Lion King for all of February. And then when we go into the summer months, well, in May, we'll have Kinky Boots, which won the 2013 oh, I, I Tony. I in New York. It is fabulous. It is so wonderful. Um, <laughs> really is a feel-good feel good show and then um, we'll be closing the season in July with Motown the Musical. Wow well thank you both for coming on and of talking course. a little bit about Memphis theater. We're Thanks really excited. Having. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lee Eck and Christina Torres for joining us today. If you would like more information on both theaters you can visit the Germantown Community Theater website at gctcomeplay.org and the Orpheum Theater website at orpheum-memphis.com. Now let's head back out into the crowd here at the Germantown Festival, where field reporter Haley Bardos has another talented artisan. Haley? Thanks, Sydney. If you like authentic, unique artwork, Driftwood Folk Art is right up your alley. I am joined with Jerry Beck and Melissa Chipman, the owners of Driftwood Folk Art. How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. Good. Will you tell me about how all of your products are made? They are handmade by the artist, Melissa Chipman, uh, one at a time, and uh, it'll be the only one that's like that. How does your art stand out from all the different craft vendors here at the festival? Well, it is totally unique. There's no two alike, and there never will be two alike. So uh, it is true folk art, and this is the only booth like this in the whole place. I've walked around all the whole place. What inspires you when you're making this art? Well, it's therapy for me. I'm a breast cancer survivor, and so I had a lot of time on my hands, and I started doing the art during that, during that time, and it's just grown from that into a, a constant therapy program. Therapeutic. That's awesome. What would you say is your most popular piece that you've sold at the festival this weekend? Today we've sold lots of birds, painted birds, and uh, things like that. I think maybe one of the most popular ones that she had was a squirrel and a raccoon. And she's only made one squirrel and one raccoon, so if people say well, we really like them, so there'll be some more in the future, but they won't be the same as the ones we had. Squirrels and raccoons, that's interesting animals. If people can't make it out to the actual grounds today, where can they find your products? You, they can like my page on Facebook. I have a page called Woodspeak and just go to it and send a friend request and you'll be able to see all of my things online. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you drift on over to Driftwood Folk Art to find the perfect addition to your art collection. Back to you, McLean. Thanks, Haley. 
Remember that you can find items from the hundreds of vendors right here at the Germantown Festival until 6 p.m. this evening. Renimi Mam is a seasoned performer at the Poplar Pike Playhouse and a member of Germantown High School's Chamber Choir. She's here to perform a number from the Playhouse's upcoming musical, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. We're so excited to have her on our show today. Here's Renimi Mam singing My Friend the Dictionary. I saved a chair for my dad in the fourth row on the aisle. And it may take him a while, but when he gets here, that's his chair. Cause my mother's in an ashram in India. I saved a chair for her too, but it's merely symbolic. As daily she cleanses herself in the Ganges. And I live in a house where there's an oversized dictionary that I read as a girl on the toilet. I love my dictionary and I love the indented borders. Every word's in alphabetical order, ergo lost things always can be found. Renimi Mam with My Friend the Dictionary. We will have the opportunity to talk with Renim later on in the show and learn more about the Poplar Pike Playhouse's upcoming production, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Now, if you've ever been to the festival before, you have no doubt you have no doubtly seen members of the Germantown Fire Department and members of the Germantown Police Department. Now, here with me today are Officer Cannon and Fire Marshal Jody Dwyer. Thank you, uh, uh, gentlemen, for coming on the show today. Thanks Thank for having us. So, Kind of tell me, obviously, I guess the, the headline of the festival is the rain. Yesterday was definitely a downpour. So kind of, <laughs> kind of tell me how both departments really handled that. You just do the best you can yeah. with, with what's going on, you know. Handle it as it comes along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we try to make sure that, the, uh, that especially the vendors here have their safety, that the, the tents are secure so that we don't lose any tents in the high winds, and that the water doesn't pose any electrical hazards. With, because we have a lot of electricity on yeah. the ground right now. Now, go, going into this and planning, what what is the fire department and police departments, you know, like what is your go-to plan for when event, like things like this happen? Because in past festivals, this has not been the case, the rain at least. Well, what we do is we have an emergency disaster plan, and in that emergency disaster plan, we have an evacuation plan established for the, for the grounds and the campus itself, including the interior buildings, where to, where to evacuate to. The police department helps with traffic and also helps with uh, placing the citizens and the vendors in safe locations. And those are mapped out and we have those in our command centers. And the police department pretty much yes. the very same thing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a plan just like they do and okay. you know, to handle uh, things like that. Now, so, so would you say that the police department and the fire department kind of work coincide this weekend? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's been that way since the beginning of the festival. And it's, uh, we've combined with the Public Safety Education Commission, the Police Department, the uh, Fire Department, and the CERT citizens all combined together to make one big safety area, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so we handle everything from first aid, emergency medical calls, to any dis you know, parties that have passed out uh, from the heat. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So uh, I guess this is, um, you know, th this is more of the little boy coming out of me because I wanted to grow up and I wanted to be you know, a police one officer heroes. one day and a, and a firefighter the next day. So what are uh, what are some of the qualifications that it takes to be a firefighter and a police to, uh, officer? Well, the fire department is always better first, and it <laughs> always should be your first choice. <laughs> Outside of that, we uh, we have a rookie school uh, that we go through, that we put our candidates through, and it's, uh, it's 18 weeks, and when you complete that school, you uh, take a test with the state to become a certified firefighter. And then you, uh, in those 314 hours, you ride out and you learn how to put your turnouts on, how to put your air pack on, what to do in the case of an emergency in a fire. Mm -hmm. And so at, at the completion of that class, 
you be you're a state certified firefighter and you begin riding out with the engine companies. And then are you a are you kind of assigned a station that you'll go to? Right. Mm -hmm. You're assigned to a station and an engine company because we have three shifts that work 24 hours a day. Okay. So you have an A, B, and C shift, and you'll work that 24 hours with that shift and that engine company that you're assigned to. Fantastic. Yeah. And for the police department? Uh, 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 police, you, first you have to meet the qualifications of the state, which relate to age, uh, any uh, past police record, uh, but there are state requirements you have to meet. Then you go to a police academy, it's 400 hours minimum, mm -hmm. uh, and then after you uh, graduate from police academy, then you're assigned to an officer, you ride with him for, or you ride with different officers for 18 weeks, at the end of that 18 weeks, then you go out on your own. Okay. And you you're guys... assigned a shift and, and you work that okay. shift. Fantastic. Okay. So do you guys do any, I guess, like youth camps or training for, I guess, the kids who aren't old enough to actually go through the, the real qualification setup? <laughs> yeah, we have an explorer program. Mm -hmm. If you're between the ages of 13 or 14 years old to the ages of 18, we uh, we put you through, it's a, it's a mini, kind of summer camp or mm -hmm. a mini explorer program where you learn what we do and how we do and if you graduate at the age of 17 or 18 you'll be able to actually come to the fires you won't be able to go in but you'll mm -hmm. assist with like setting up the rehab center or giving them for water or, or refreshments mm -hmm. changing out air packs and you learn all how to do all that to support uh, the fire department okay. during this ministry. Uh, we really don't for, for you know for uh, young people we used to have an explorer program but we didn't no longer do we do do a citizen police academy where we have citizens from the community come in and we show them what we do every Thursday night. In fact, we have a citizen's police academy currently going on. They come in every Thursday night. We show them what we do, you know, how we do it, when we do it, that kind of thing. We also have a reserve program where uh, people from the community come in and they become reserves mm -hmm. and they, like, we, uh, reserves are, uh, are working a great uh, bit of the, yeah. the festival for us. Yeah. So they help us out where we don't have to rely on our regular officers as much. We, it saves us on overtime, saves the city money, but uh, we have the reserve program and they help us out a lot also. Yeah, and actually that, that's what I was gonna bring up because we had a report on uh, on this show actually last year talking about the reserve officers. What is that like knowing, uh, obviously with that extra comfort, I mean, what is it like working with, with these volunteers that, you know, th this is not their career? It, they're all good guys and, you know, and they're they're eager to, eager to help us out. They also they'll come in and ride shifts. Uh, they work you know high school basketball games, high school football games. A lot of the things where we'd have to have regular officers take them off the street and put them put them in, in those slots. Mm -hmm. That like say they help us out by working those those events and it, it really helps us out a lot. Yeah. Oh, I think I think a bug just just flew on the side of your face. That that side right there. Oh. Live television being outside, right? <laughs> there, there we is. go. We'll, we'll just sort of crawl on the. On and the, the same for the fire department. Those, those reserves, uh, <laughs> like the bugs, save, uh, yeah. save us a lot, a lot of time. And it takes a lot of dedication on those guys' part because they have a career and then they donate their time to the police or fire departments. It, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of dedication. Now, a lot of commitment. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you are both naturally role models in the city for little boys up to grown men. And little girls. And little girls. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So, what. What kind of, I guess, you know, what level are you held up to? I mean, obviously you are the leaders of the, of the community. Sure. <laughs> then there's an ethical standard and a moral standard that we, that we as uh, professionals present in our community and that the city expects of us. And you have to understand that kind of comes with the job, you know. Right. When you take this role on or you take a, start out in this, in this career, you know that that's part of the job. And nine times out of ten, it's never an issue. Uh -huh. well, thank you two so much for coming on. It was wonderful hearing about who's protecting us and <laughs> looking out for fabulous. us. Out for <laughs> thank, us. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. I'd like to thank both Officer Cannon and uh, Fire Marshal Jody Dwyer for coming on. If you would like more information on the police department or the fire department, you can visit germantown-tn.gov. We're just getting started with our live coverage of the Germantown Festival. Still to come, we've got more interviews and performers and highlights from Friday night's Germantown High football game. Stick around after this short break. Good evening and welcome to the Time Chris Barnell. Reporting from Moscow. Tbilisi. Times Square. May your dreams be your only boundaries in life.
now watch your favorite Germantown community television shows from anywhere in the world. GHS TV is streaming online, live 24-7. A viewing screen displays our channel just like you see on television. Simply visit our website at www.ghstv.org. So log on and enjoy hometown news from anywhere in the world, only at ghstv.org. Thanks for tuning in to GHS TV's live coverage of the Germantown Festival. If you are just joining us, I am Sydney Armstrong and this is my co-host McLean Mayers. We'll be on air until 5 o'clock tonight giving you an exclusive tour around the festival without ever having to leave your seat. Now, joining us now is Leadership Germantown's Executive Director Donna Chandler Newman. Hello. Ms. Newman, thank you so much for coming on today. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and thank you all for having me. Oh, of, well, of course. course. It is always <laughs> a joy having you on. Thank you. So tell me, what's going on with Leadership Germantown right now? Oh my goodness, Leadership Germantown, we're in the throes of picking our next class. We're picking mm -hmm. the oh, class wow. of 2015. It's okay. really exciting. Yes, it really is. <laughs> and we're getting applications galore and such qualifications coming from them. You know, the purpose of Leadership Germantown is to engage and inspire people to step up and make the community even better. Mm -hmm. And so we reach out to people. We, we have leaders that apply. They're already leaders. Mm -hmm. They're looking to develop and hone their skills. Mm -hmm. And then they're looking to um, be exposed to where they can volunteer to, um, to improve the community. And so that's what we're working on. This year, we're, um, we have so many applications that we're encouraging everyone to fill them out so thoroughly. They're reaching back to high school to even tell us what they do. Wow. Yeah, I, there's so many applications, but we have to get the class down to about 22 wow. in order to make it really work and to make it a great experience for those people who are in the class. So how many applicants do you, do you usually get every year? Well, this year we're going to top well over 100. We'll send out, wow. there'll be 400 packages that go out about that range, yeah. but about 100 will come back in uh, complete and wanting to be in the program. So that's why I'm telling you it's extremely competitive. Wow. It's it really is. It really does sound like that. Yeah. So what are some of these skills that 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 these business owners and these leaders of Memphis, you know, but what, what kind of skills are on these resumes that are coming in? Oh gosh. Most of them have done uh, things within their own communities for starters or their own companies and they're leaders in their companies, but they also are already heading up homeowners associations and they're heading up um, neighborhood groups, and they're heading up church organizations, and you know, as well as those sorts of things. Not for their jobs, but as volunteers. Mm -hmm. Some are already on commissions, but I will tell you that the city of Germantown prefers before you apply for a commission that you're already a graduate of our program. In fact, it's on their application to join a commission. What leadership Germantown class did you graduate from? <laughs> they're okay. pretty specific yeah. about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, kind of tell me once once you narrow it down to, to these lucky twenty, obviously this year with so many people writing yes. in and wanting to join. How 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 does leadership Germantown work? What, what is the process after being accepted? Well, first you come and you have a uh, we have a social, if you will, where they, it's a get to know you social, okay. and then we go away for a weekend at Team Trek, which is in Heber Springs. And there's only one other leadership program that goes periodically over there. It's an expensive program, um, but we think it's well worth it and is the core of our program. It, ta it teaches many of the leadership um, qualities and attributes that we build on throughout the rest of the uh, program. And then we visit, um, we have a, a uh, Germantown Education Day. We have a uh, state government day. We have a community mm -hmm. government. We have a quality of life. And we go through 10 various sessions that indoctrinate you to Germantown and what's available here and what's going on in the city and where to get plugged in. And then you um, figure out what's the best place to use your skills. So uh, that's what we do. And we're really, we're really excited about that. This year, um, the Germantown medical one is also an interesting yeah. one too. Uh, William Kinley uh, comes on and he does a talk on leadership that we, um, that just honestly sets the tone for the rest of the class. It's about halfway through the team track does most of the leadership attributes on the front. But then uh, William Kinley comes and reinforces many of the attributes that he learned mm -hmm. as he came up to be the president of the hospital as he is now. Yes. So uh, I think that we are very, very, um, 
lucky. We're just very mm -hmm. grateful for the community support that we get from so many. Yeah, it's, to, it's amazing. Um, yes, to talk to our uh, the leaders that yeah. are in our class that are you know trying to reach out and do even more. Yeah. Now tell me, I mean, obviously they are going through through training and and, and they are seeing each other a lot. It, are these graduating classes? Do they form a very tight bond? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, they really do. And you know, we noticed, we haven't always done Team Trek. We started that in 2007. But we've noticed since 2007 that those classes are just incredibly tight. They have socials with each other. <laughs> I mean, I'm constantly getting notes that come on and join us at this pool party. And they're just very, very tight. They also help each other within their jobs and their organizations. And that's, that's great for the community. Oh, yeah. It really is. And to tell you the truth, um, it's not actually the intent of the program, if you will. Our mm -hmm. intent is to develop them, to make them better, but we also recognized how much synergy there is mm -hmm. from leaders knowing leaders and helping each other plug in mm -hmm. to various aspects of the community and also in their jobs. Oh, yeah. uh, we find it's very beneficial for their companies. So it's a great program. I'm just happy to be associated with it and we're thrilled to death uh, oh, with our upcoming class. I don't know how we're gonna pick uh, I, will say, I will say that one of the things that we do that is also different from the rest of the community, we do not have um, quotas, if you will. I'm not looking for this many males and this many females and mm -hmm. all the rest of it. There's a group in our, uh, on our board that are the recruiting and selection committee and every single application we have is redacted. Wow. So they, they don't know what their names are. They don't right. come in with circles around them. So I'll have a lot of disappointed people, and I know, I know it'll be a lot of ugly phone calls, <laughs> yeah. but, but uh, they also recognize that it is competitive and they're grateful for when they get in. We ask for 100% commitment and we get it because they know that you know if you're trying to come into the program, you're one of the it's lucky tough. few that got a spot. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be at the festival and we're happy to be with you all. You do such great work and thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank Donna Chandler Newman for coming on today. And if, you'd like, and if you would like more information on Leadership Germantown, you can reach them at leadershipgermantown.org. Now, throughout this afternoon's live show, we've been joined by our two field reporters, Cave Galani and Haley Bardos. Haley and Cave will be our eyes and ears of the festival, bringing us interviews with some of the many vendors found here at the Germantown Festival. Right now, let's check in with Cave for the latest from the grounds. Cave, what do you have for us? Thanks, McLean. Do you enjoy living your life without the constant interruption of social media? One vendor that really embodies this term is You Are Here, Be Here. I'm here with Betty Talley, owner of You Are Here, Be Here. Hey, Betty. Hey, how are you? So what is, their philosophy, what is the philosophy behind your business? The philosophy behind You Are Here, Be Here is just not to become distracted by cell phones, modern technology, about living life, being here in the moment. So how did you come up with this business idea? Um, last year, my granddaughter um, asked her teacher not to tell her mother something, and she said, why don't you want your mom to know? She goes, I don't want her to Facebook it. And, and then I saw a young boy at the pool um, during the summer. He kept trying to get his mother's attention, watch mm -hmm. me, look at me. Mm -hmm. She never once took her eyes off her cell phone, kept texting, and said, nice, I'm very proud of you. And the disappointment on his face as he turned away, knowing that she wasn't going to watch him, just kind of led us to, you were here, be here. So what do you sell at You Are Here, Be Here? Life, about not being distracted on t-shirts, um, being here in the moment, being social, and yeah. not letting your cell phones and modern technology distract you. So how long have you been coming to Germantown Festival? This is our first year. How are you liking it so far? So far it's been great. Been getting a real positive response um, to the message that we're putting out and selling a lot of t-shirts. If somebody really supports your idea but can't be here to the festi at the festival, is there any way they can still uh, support your business? Yes, they can visit us at youareherebehere.com and they can order t-shirts online. All right, well, thank you so much. Thanks. The festival won't be back until next year, so remember to live in the moment and enjoy your time here. Remember, you are here, so be here. Back to you, McLean. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> We're looking forward to more insightful updates throughout the show. Before the break, we heard Renimi Mam perform a song from the Poplar Pike Playhouse's upcoming musical, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Renim now joins us on set. Hello, Hello and Renim. welcome. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's my He's saying wonderfully. Thank you. <laughs> so, tell us what to expect from the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Oh my gosh. Uh, just expect a lot of funny jokes, improv, volunteers coming up on stage. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. That's really exciting. So, what character do you play? 
I play all of Ostrovsky, and she's kind of the shy character, the one mm -hmm. that doesn't want to like talk and socialize. Mm -hmm. She tries, but like she kind of feels really self-conscious a lot. And, yeah. Okay. Well, I heard you mention uh, the guest audience members. What What is that all about? Um, well, we get um, audience volunteers. We ask them pre-show, uh, pre and uh, they get to be on stage and be part of the spelling bee with, along with the characters. It's a lot of fun. So is there a lot of ad-libbing going on, or are they given yeah. script? They, no, this is all improv. Improv. It's really, it's really funny. Well, what happens when they don't spell the word right? <laughs> they get out. That's oh, okay. well, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I see. Well, that's that's awesome. So I understand that there's been some appropriate changes made, like songs and stuff. So, uh, yeah. so, so, w what can you tell me about that? Well, it is a high school show. Right. But you yeah. know, we we try and keep it we try and keep it PG enough. But it's still funny. Yeah, still funny. <laughs> now. Obviously, um, 25th is a pretty small cast It's because it, it's just the spellers and the teachers, yes. am I right? Yes. yes. So, can you kind of tell me, does this cast over time, do they get pretty close together? Oh, yeah. I feel like this cast is just already so much like a family. We all, we all like, encourage each other and laugh at each other's jokes during, the, during our uh, rehearsals. Yeah, we, we all, we're all just one big group, and it's yeah. just, it's a great, it's a great feeling. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was my pleasure. Very excited to, to see the show, to hear about the show. Yeah, Same. I can't wait for everyone to see it. <laughs> Thanks again for being with us today, Renee. The 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee runs at the Poplar Pike Playhouse October 16th through the 25th. For more information, visit ppp.org. Throughout this afternoon's live show, we there are actually a lot of artisans here at the festival and. Right now, we are going to cut to Kaylin Coltair and videographer Sean Burns' report on Faces of the Festival. The Germantown Festival booths may have many familiar faces, but that doesn't mean there aren't newcomers. One new face, Nikki Holcomb, brings her creative side to the festival and shows off her unique antique door refurbishing hobby. Holcomb is a stay-at-home mom who turned her hobby into a business. I take old antique doors and I repurpose them into multiple things, mainly headboards or some people just like to hang them on the wall. Each door takes eight hours from start to finish. Holcomb says this process relaxes her from everyday stress. We take it and we strip it down. A lot of them have paint on them because they're so old. And then we sand it and we um, prime it and start painting. Holcomb is new to the craft world and has an Etsy shop online where you can find her unique craft. I started this last November and it's turned into a lot of work. <laughs> Another new vendor, Katie Hedgepeth, creates bow ties for young children in her craft room inside her Germantown home. There's three different pieces of fabric you gotta cut out and you have to iron some interfacing to part of it. Then it's just a lot of like sewing and ironing, and then you get, so two pieces make up the bow, then one long piece makes up the neck strap. So get all those pieces, you get them all sewed together, and then you just kind of put it together, and you have a bow tie. Hedgepeth wasn't always this crafty. I was a special education math teacher through the end of the school year, and I got pregnant, and so I'm not going back and I thought I'd just work from home. Her work will be at her booth on the festival grounds until 5 p.m. Come on out today and see these two unique vendors and hundreds more. Reporting for GHS TV, I'm Kaylin Coulter. Thank you, Kaylin. The artisans featured in the report and hundreds of others will be here until 6 p.m. this evening. Memphis has many phenomenal research organizations that, have, that have extremely high expectations. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and the American Cancer Society both have one goal in mind, finding a cure for cancer. Joining us now to talk about what their organizations are doing are Amy Beth Dudley from St. Jude and Sarah Bynum from the American Cancer Society. Well, ladies, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for, thank having, you for having us. Now, Miss Dudley, kind of tell me, what, what is St. Jude, what is, what's going on at St. Jude right now? What, what are their goals? Well, 
it's the, it's the main goal and has been from the very inception from Danny Thomas is that no child should die in the dawn of life. Mm -hmm. So we work every day both with hands-on hospital care and patient treatment but also with a tremendous research uh, program there at the hospital that protocols go out across the world as a matter of fact to treat treat children with cancer and our friends the American Cancer Society donate millions upon millions of dollars to us to help, to help fund that and, and others do as well. So, so the American Cancer Society and Sage would work coincide. We, we are we're partners. We are partners in the fight to finish the fight against cancer. Oh, right. So the American awesome. Cancer Society invests in cancer research grants designed to prevent cancer, find early detection methods and treatment options for those who are facing cancer. Throughout the past several years we've invested about 20 million dollars in St. Jude research and every year we invest about 160 million dollars in research programs uh, across the country. So, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I've lost, I've lost a lot of you know family members and friends to the disease, and so yeah. we can't thank you enough for all you guys do. Yeah. And well, and we have too. I know that I lost my dad in September of 2011. So I'm September sorry. is always a hard time for me, but it's such a wonderful opportunity to raise our voices. We've learned that cancer is not going to quit if we're silent. So we really have to raise our voices and get uh, loud in the fight to end, uh, the fight to end cancer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So now I know, um, I read actually on the American Cancer Society page that September is, um, it is Childhood, childhood Cancer, cancer Awareness, awareness Month. month. Sorry, it is. Perfect. Yes, absolutely perfect. It is. But, so can you kind of explain what all is going to be going on in the month of September to help raise awareness? So, and, and it's, it's folks like everybody at St. Jude that really help um, us get our mission across. So cancer doesn't just affect older people. It, cancer affects everybody, no matter where you are in your life. And so um, September is such an important month for us to raise awareness about childhood cancers. As, um, as Amy Beth said, we should not lose children to this disease. We know too much now to, to lose anybody to cancer, especially our young, our young folks. So during the month of September, we'll see more um, uh, more opportunities for families to raise more awareness with their children about eating right and exercising and understanding their family history and really um, taking control of their own health and the health of their children. Mm -hmm. And St. Jude is specifically looking for people, and this is a Facebook initiative and an online initiative, so it really said it doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort, but for people to be ambassadors against childhood cancer. You can go online, you can register and say, I'm an ambassador. Raise your hand, raise your voice like yeah. Sarah said, and say, I'm going you know, to be an ambassador for this cause. Post it on Facebook. We have a tag that you can put on your on your profile picture that says I'm supporting this. So it's a really wow. quick and simple way that anybody can be involved with this. Is because there an age for that? Anyone. Anyone. Oh my anyone. gosh, we're going to have to go look no. at that. Definitely. You have to do yeah. it. Oh, yeah, will. absolutely. Definitely. We have uh, banners for your profile and tags for your oh, picture wow. and all kinds of cool things that you can follow. You just go in and register and it's as simple as that. So oh my gosh, I'm going to write that down. That's on your Facebook? It's St. Jude. Absolutely. Wow. It's the St. Jude Facebook page. can direct you and tell you exactly what to do. Oh, fantastic. And is this just for this month or is this for I mean you can join any time of the year absolutely well certainly it is September and as you said it's childhood cancer mm -hmm. awareness month and everybody else knows that October is breast cancer awareness month and yeah. there are other months throughout the year there's always something going on that you can you can raise your voice about and, and mm -hmm. support and participate and I think the most important thing for people to do is to pick the cancer that has touched their lives the most and fight that cancer and I think if we can all come together to absolutely. fight the cancers that we that we hate um, yeah. We can make a world free of cancer. That's our goal. So um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I have on my pink breast cancer awareness shoes oh, today. Wow. Those are super groovy. cute. Those are so nice. <laughs> I know. So the American Cancer Society invests more in breast cancer research than any other um, organization. We invest th this year $84 million in about 200 grants to fight breast cancer specifically. It's one of our, our main missions is to fight breast cancer and lung cancer, colon cancer and put an end to cancer in general. Our goal is to put ourselves out of business. That's right. Same with St. Jude. We would love to, we would love to eradicate cancer. One of our mm -hmm. goals is to, to be at a 90% cure rate within a decade. And we, we're, we won't quit until no child has cancer. We will not quit. That's, That's fantastic. Right. That, yeah. is, that is so great oh. to hear. <laughs> yeah. Because I think, you know, it's sometimes, it, it can get very, you know, very depressing. I've, I've actually, this last day, I lost one of my best friends, his, his long fight with cancer. Max Burdett, he right. he fought for a while, you know, he, of course he fought the good fight. So uh, kind of tell me, how has Memphis really adopted St. Jude and American mm -hmm. Cancer Society? I mean, obviously people think of St. Jude when they when they look at Memphis, but how has, how has Memphis like, I guess, hugged themselves around these two great organizations? Memphis is an amazing community. They really do come out and support. We have so many events and people, I, I think we don't realize one, like you both said, we've all had friends and family that have been affected by this illness. 
that's one way. Love on your friends and family and support them if you know somebody that's going through this. Support them in that. Mm -hmm. But also through our fundraisers, it does take money to keep the hospital open. It takes money to conduct research mm -hmm. that you guys are doing. So through all of our fundraisers, Memphis shows up in amazing, amazing numbers to support everything that we do so often. It's incredible to me what the Memphis community does for us. And so for the American Cancer Society, we see people every day come into our office and into our Harris Hope Lodge facility located on Union Avenue for, um, for help, whether they need a wig because they've lost their hair to treatment or they need a place, a free place to stay while they're in Memphis for treatment. One of the best things about Memphis is our medical community. Mm -hmm. People from all over the country come to Memphis for, right. for treatment or for, um, for doctor's appointments. And so we have the Harris Hope Lodge, which is a free place for those folks to stay. You're coming into Memphis for treatment. You and a caregiver can stay for free. Um, so for us, uh, Memphis is really the worst place to be diagnosed with breast cancer if you're if you're a woman, an African American woman. So we work every day to educate everybody in our community about the importance of self exams, going to the doctor, knowing your family history, mm -hmm. and really taking control of your health and educating the people we serve every day about the importance of their health. Mm -hmm. Wow, absolutely! Well, thank you both thank for coming you so on. Much. This thank was you. a wonderful conversation. And thank you thank for you. everything you thank do. You. Yeah, thank, thank you for having well, us. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank I would you. like to thank both Amy Beth and Sarah Bynum for joining us today. If you'd like more information, you can visit stjude.org, and you can find the American Cancer Society at cancer.org. Now let's head back out into the field where Haley Bardos has another festival vendor. Haley? Thanks, Sydney. A native of Money, Mississippi, Whitney Kearney has always had a love for art. She shares her passion with us at the festival through her booth, Pleasant View Pottery. How are you doing today, Ms. Kearney? I'm doing great. Will you tell me how you make your pottery? Um, I... Make, I hand make all of my pottery, and so I use either a potter's wheel or I'll ro roll out slabs, but the majority of it is made on the potter's wheel. The name of your booth is obviously Pleasant View Pottery. Will you tell me a little bit about Pleasant View Plantation? Uh, yes, um, in about the late 1800s, my great-grandfather um, and his family settled in Money, Mississippi, and um, it had like a cotton plantation with um, a gin and um, everything on the place and in, also on the place was a blacksmith shop and there on the blacksmith shop is where I first started making my pottery was my first studio. Do you have a most popular piece at the festival or do you have any favorites? Um, m probably most popular are my ring holders. My ring holders are, are real popular. My soap dishes um, are the great stocking stuffers if anybody's looking for a stocking stuffer and then um, I personally love to make teapots are my favorite thing to make and um, uh, really enjoy um, anything um, that I make that's functional. If people can't make it out to the grounds today is there any other way that they can see your pottery? Uh, yes I have a website that's pleasantviewpottery.com um, or you can always send me an email at pleasantviewpottery at gmail.com uh, and if I don't have it on the website I probably have it at home. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on with me today. To see incredible family rooted pottery come to Pleasant View Pottery where you can find the perfect piece to perk up your home. Back to you Sydney. Thanks Haley. We can't wait to see what else you and Kay find this afternoon. We are now going to take a short break, but please, please, please stay with us and join us once again for the Germantown Festival Live Coverage 2014. Live from Germantown Civic Club Complex, it's GHS TV's live coverage of the 43rd Annual Germantown Festival, the largest arts and crafts festival in the Mid-South. And now, here are your hosts, McLean Mayers and Sydney Armstrong. Welcome back to the live coverage of Germantown Festival 2014. I'm McLean Mayers and this is my co-host, Sydney Armstrong. Throughout today's show, we've been bringing you performances from some of the area's up-and-coming talent. An alum of Germantown High School, Jeffrey Jordan is a locally known performer and songwriter. He currently attends the University of Memphis where he is majoring in music business. His talent and musical skills are still remembered by his fellow classmates and teachers. 
He's here with us today to perform one of his own new songs, Happy Man. I wake up and I got air to breathe I got milk in the fridge And all I can be is a happy man Oh, I'm a happy man I walk out the door with shoes on my feet I got keys to that old car parked on the street I'm a happy man Oh, I'm a happy man If you ask me how I'm doing No, I won't have to lie I can promise you right now I'm doing more than all right. I got better things to think about than the things that are going bad. I'm a happy man. Oh, I'm a happy man. There's a million things I gotta get done, but I won't stress about them. I'll just take them one by one and be a happy man. Oh, I'm a happy man. There's a million people who got something to say, but I can't please them all, so I'll just take the day to be a happy man. Oh, I'm a happy man. If you ask me how I'm doing, no, I won't have to lie. I can promise you right now I'm doing more than all right. I got better things to think about. go my way and I'll float the fire but I can still say I'm a happy man oh I'm a happy man say to plan it all out and find all the answers but I'll just say a prayer and I'll take my chances I'm a happy man oh I'm a happy man oh oh oh, oh I'm a happy man oh I'm a Jordan singing his original song, Happy Man. Stay with us to hear more from him in just a few moments. Now, we've all heard of drive through fast food or, a dri or even a drive through teller, but what about drive through opera? Opera Memphis is going to very creative lengths to introduce the Mid-South to its beautiful art form. Student reporter Brian Scott and videographer Miles Roddy were on hand when 30 Days of Opera made a stop here at the Germantown Festival. We've seen it all here at the festival, but maybe not this. An opera serenade for all at the festival lucky enough to cross their path. Opera Memphis's 30 Days of Opera strolled through the Germantown Festival on Saturday. These artists are traveling through the Mid-South every day in September, looking to break the stereotypes surrounding opera. A lot of people think that opera is uh, stuffy, that you have to wear a top hat and a monocle and, you know, eat Grey Poupon out of the jar before going. And, uh, and it really isn't that way. Maybe it was in the 50s or 60s when they made the Bugs Bunny cartoons, but it isn't anymore. We're trying to reach into the community, touch people that haven't heard opera, haven't been exposed to opera before, um, schools, just random people on street corners, anyone we can reach. Now in its third year, 30 Days of Opera will include a rush hour serenade at East Parkway and Sam Cooper, a visit to Cooper Young Fest, and to the Memphis Farmer's Market. I love being able to just walk down a street or walk into a restaurant or something and just burst into song. And by and large, everyone is really receptive to it. Everyone is really excited by it. And it just makes me feel like I'm interacting with the community in a way that I never have before. This event has also created some memorable memories along the way. At that library I went to in South Memphis, I sang Some Enchanted Evening and just seeing how it lit up people's faces to see that reaction that wow, opera is cool and it's really great to listen to. I wasn't here for this one, but we did have a situation where we got thrown out of a target. And all of this is aimed at changing the way we look at opera and at how we embrace our city. It's outreach, it's just touching the community in a way that they haven't experienced before. And it's pretty much unique in the country, so it makes Memphis a more special place, I think. So that's it. Opera Memphis, breaking down the barriers of opera and reaching out to the area of Memphis, one song and one day at a time. And here they are. Back to
Thanks, Brian. <laughs> and if you'd like to see the entire calendar for the 30, day, 30 Days of Opera, you can find it at operamemphis.org. Just a moment ago, we had the pleasure of hearing Jeffrey Jordan's original song, Happy Man. Join me in welcoming back Jeffrey to our set to answer a few questions. Welcome. Hey, <laughs> welcome, welcome, How's Jeffrey. Going? So, what was your inspiration for Happy Man? Well, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> got fans. <laughs> I do. I got fans in the back. Uh, you know, uh, behind the reason I actually wrote the song was uh, I had a car that just blew up like a week after I bought it, and you know, uh, a lot of my friends and stuff were like, "Hey, man, like that really sucks," and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, you know whatever I'm a happy man so it kind of I was like you know that could be a song so I sit down and wrote it it's awesome right? that's, that's good so when did you first gain an interest in music I know you've been you know really involved with choir and stuff when you were in high school and now now you're going to University of Memphis and pursuing you know music so mm -hmm. when did you first gain an interest I mean I've been I've loved music all my life I've done music since as long as I can remember at church at school but I guess I finally decided that I wanted to make a career out of it probably my senior year of high school Mm -hmm. So, do you is your family musical? I know I know your brother is, but any yeah, adults uh, or? my mom is really isn't really, but my dad has been singing forever. He sang when he was little, and he okay. still sings at church and stuff. And you know, all my siblings, my brother and my sisters and my other brother, they're all doing music. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny that you uh, mentioned uh, your vehicle for your inspiration for Happy Man because my next question actually has to do with uh, a truck that you had a while ago. I, I saw on your bio on YouTube that uh, you had made some sacrifices, specifically your truck, to make your p music needs. So what can you tell me about that and your bad luck with vehicles, uh, I guess? Yeah, actually, I in my senior year when I decided that I wanted to take music a lot more seriously, I, ended up, I sold my truck that I would saved up for all of high school and pretty much put all my money into mm -hmm. and I sold it to buy a guitar and a MacBook so that I could make uh, recordings with uh, Pro Tools on my on my computer. So uh, I, th I feel like that's kind of a cool story. <laughs> yeah. So talk me through your process of songwriting, not just specifically Happy Man, but any any of your songs. I've been asked that a lot and I really don't have a, a mm -hmm. process. It's, it's really just, I'll think of a hook, like I thought of Happy Man and I just sit down and write a song. I can't if I try to sit down and write a song, I, c I can't do it. So but, there's not really a method to the madness. Yeah, it just it's, I'll just think of something that can be a song, and I'll sit down, and it'll just it'll just start coming out. It just kind of pops <laughs> up. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, growing up in Memphis, you know, a very musically inclined town. Mm -hmm. What has that been like growing up? You know, at the home of soul, and then surrounded you know, by and then music. country is just right up the road in Nashville. Yeah, it, I think it's been really cool. You know, a lot of people think that you really got to be in Nashville to you know pursue the whole songwriter music thing, but you know, Memphis. Uh, there's a lot of great opportunities here. There's so much live music here, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, I really feel like the the whole blues and soul uh, and rock influence has really kind of influenced my music a lot. Because mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the typical country guy. You know, I have I have definitely had that aspect of rock and you know more alternative kind of sound in my in my country. All right. music. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Your yeah. performance was fantastic. Wonderful job. Well, thanks yeah. for having me. I yeah, enjoyed thank it. You. Thank you, Jeffrey, for being on our show today. Now, just a few weeks ago, the student staff here at GHS-TV produced a post-game show for the Germantown High football team season opener against Millington. We heard such a great feedback from our coverage that we decided to produce more sports specials throughout the school year. Our crew was at Red Devil Field this past Friday when 15 AAA foe Collierville visited campus. Here are the highlights from, the, from a game that featured two talented teams giving their all until the final horn. An inspired Germantown defense led to a nail-biter Friday night at Red Devil Field. Germantown held Collierville to under 200 yards of offense, but the Dragon defense proved just as stingy. It was defense and missed opportunities that kept both teams off the board in the first half. This muffed punt nearly gave the Red Devils the ball in Collierville territory. Later, the Dragon special team extended a drive on this fake punt, only to see the Germantown D hold strong and a field goal try sail wide. As the Red Devils searched for answers against a tough Collierville defense, the home team kept the stands alive with big plays like this interception by Ken Wilson. A blocked punt late in the half gave Germantown possession at the Collierville 35. The Red Devils got close, but they couldn't convert, sending both teams into the locker room scoreless. 
Collierville broke the scoreless tie with this 55-yard run by Drew Vandiverst in the third quarter. But the Red Devils were quick to steal momentum back, tying things up when Drew White found Rodney Williams for the 12-yard TD. The Germantown defense continued its stellar play as students from both schools were festive. A mistake on special teams allowed Collierville to continue their drive. Overtime still looked like a real possibility until Collierville scored with only 24 seconds to play. Germantown couldn't complete the comeback and Collierville took the 15 AAA opener 14-7. really gave it their all Friday night and we're looking forward forward to this week's game at Briarcrest. Yeah, joining us now is Red Devil defensive line coordinator Stephen Reeder and Germantown senior linebacker Jonah Ligon. They're here to offer some insight on Friday's night, Friday night's battle against Collierville and tell us more about this year's team. So once again, thank you gentlemen for coming on. No problem. So, you know, I was at the game Friday night, you know, I was, I mean, in my opinion, we definitely should have won that game, but what are some of the positives that you took out of this game? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first thing you got to take from that game is the way the kids fought. Mm -hmm. uh, at no point did we give up uh, offensively, defensively, special teams. We had young kids playing in position for the first time, especially on special teams. And they did very well. And I thought the bright spot was the fact that the defense played as well as it did all night long. Yeah, and it seemed to be very consistent. I mean, for the most part, I mean, that defense did did their job exactly what what they were supposed to be doing, and that really came in definitely to your side of it, Jonah, being okay. being one of the captains on the defense. Can it, can you kind of tell me how you motivated your side your side of the team to play that full game? Uh, I really tried to tell my teammates to stay focused throughout the game, know mm -hmm. what's going on, know what can happen each play, and you know when they see it happening, react positively, react hard to the ball, do your job, mm -hmm. and th good things will happen. Yeah. So mm -hmm. over since the beginning of the season. Um, I've definitely seen a, a progression. Can you kind of tell me what have you been doing in practices that are you know preparing you to move forward step by step? Well, I think the first thing we do is we keep it as consistent as possible. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing week after week, we never change. Um, I think what you're seeing is from week one to this week is a lot of young kids getting experience. They're used to the Friday night lights. They're used to the teams we're playing, the speed, the quickness of the game where they may have just played freshman football last year, now they're seeing it on a Friday night. It's a completely different, completely different aspect of the game. And so what you get is that, that experience begins to show by being in the right place, as Jonah said, by knowing what your assignment is and feeling more comfortable out there on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, can I add to that? Yeah. Go ahead. When kids make mistakes, they can learn from them. And as the weeks go on, they make more mistakes, but that also means they learn more. And so it's like that experience that he was talking about. It's when they make mistakes in practice, they learn from them, and they won't make the same ones in the game. Yeah. So, Jonah, I mean, as a senior, I mean, you have played at Germantown for four years, and then before that at the middle school. I mean, what does it mean to every Friday now putting on putting on that red jersey and playing playing for the Red Devils? Um, yeah, I've put on the jersey many, many times, the red jersey, uh, and it's not none of it's as special as it is this year. Uh, every single time I go out there, I like know to cherish it, know to cherish my time out there and take advantage of it. Uh, it's really special to be out there and watching you know, younger guys play and thinking I was one of them one day. And thinking back uh, when I was young and looking at the older guys and thinking I am one of those one yeah. now. So. And Coach Reader, I mean, you, you play for the Red Devils. Now you teach and now you coach. I mean, what is it like, I mean, at first, not only teaching, but also you, you are coaching the team that you played for once before. Well, I mean, once I realized that I wanted to be a teacher, there's no other school that I'd want to teach at. Um, the life lessons I learned under Coach Netherland and Mr. Chisholm and Miss Harmon was my teacher at one point. It's the greatest school that I could even you know, want to ever be at. And so I try every year, especially with a new group of seniors, to explain to them that your senior year doesn't last but a moment. And you have to enjoy every bit of it, playing with your teammates. Um, even as difficult as practice is, those Friday nights are you know, why don't we go out there and do all that work and lift weights and run? Because Friday night's special. Mm -hmm. And you only get one senior year and it's over. Yeah. So what, I guess, for the next couple games, obviously you have some very tough games coming up. You're traveling to Briarcrest and then to Houston, and of course, Crosstown Rival. 
What is going to be your game plan in practice and taking that to the field in the next couple weeks? Simply stated, we just have to stop beating ourselves. We have to take care of the football, no silly penalties, uh, do whatever we have to do to, you know, keep the ball moving forward, score points, keep the defense off the field. Um, you know, the, the great old adage is the best defense is a great offense because they keep the defense off the field. Um, I think that with the experience we gained Friday night, even though we lost, we know that if the ball bounces a different way, that's our game. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll take that into Briarcrest and then Houston and so forth as we go. No, I have I have a question for Jonah. Yeah. You know, McLean and I are you know involved in the musicals, and though we're not playing a sport, you know it, it's very much similar in the fact that you know we're, we work as a team, and you know we're yeah. out there, and what happens happens. You know, so what is it like you know being a part of a team, or I like to call it a family. You know, yeah. what's what's that like? Uh, it's you know like having their back. You know, mm -hmm. talking to guys at halftime when you know they've made mistakes, you've made mistakes. And you all just sit there, and you know that they have your back, and you have theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's something like that where it makes you able to build on each other and make each other better. And, uh, you know, everything they tell you, you know, they're trying to be positive, trying to help you. And, you know, you can return the favor and help them out, too. So it's, it, it's reassurance and, you know, mm -hmm. family out there. Yeah. yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. So I guess I going back to Friday, I mean, to be, on, I mean, to be honest, I saw a lot of really great things that I had not seen the past two games. I guess team-wise, it, it, it seems like... The, the leaders that were supposed to be leaders were stepping up, and that was a domino effect for the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you, have you kind of felt that? I guess both of you over the past couple weeks, just, I guess, increasing. I guess. Yeah, it, and it's same with uh, younger guys too. Once they find their role, once they find their niche on the team, then uh, when older guys make plays, it kind of loosens them up and lets them play freely, but also like restrained in their role. And uh, that's what really helped Friday night on the defensive side is we had guys that. You know, it could be the glue, but they could also make big plays. And then that allowed the younger guys to, you know, really, like, play freely and play and have fun out there. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits of a coaching standpoint is to have someone like Jonah on the field with the defense because I can only do so much on the sideline. I can only yell so loud. But he's right there in with them. He can talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, look them in the eye. And, and he's got a better sense of how they're feeling. And on the offensive side of the ball, I mean, with Drew out there and you've got other seniors who have been out there, um, we as coaches depend on them on the field mm -hmm. to be able to talk to them because you know we can only do so much on the sideline or the press box or wherever. Yeah, and, and I guess I mean is I mean obviously is it very nice having knowing that you have Jonah and Drew and all these other seniors that have I mean they were once little kids in that in the end zone area on yeah. Friday nights. Oh, it's it's a completely different comfort level. I mean mm -hmm. when we started against Millington, we had probably only four guys on the defensive side that had played defense last year. But with Jonah in the middle, you know, he literally, you know, in June and July when we started, is helping every kid with what they're supposed to do. That takes a lot of pressure off of us. Now we can game plan more because we know we can trust Jonah to do and to get across the message we're trying to get. And I mean, from a coaching standpoint, that's invaluable. Yeah. Well, thank you and good luck in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. I know, I know the Red Devils can pull through. Absolutely. Definitely. I'd like to thank both Jonah and Coach Reader for coming on today. If you want to know more information about the Red Devil season and upcoming games, you can visit SESK12.org for more information. The weekend after Labor Day means more than just the Germantown Festival to many people in our area. It also marks the second week of college football season and kickoff for the NFL. With so many games on television this weekend, reporter Kennedy Harris and videographer Daniel Jaramillo ventured onto the grounds to find what the festival has to offer area sports fans. With the football season kicking off last week for both NFL and college, many fans are pumped to see what this season has in store. Fans are excited to rep their favorite teams, and the Germantown Festival has become a staple for many to find their favorite team's items. I was going to uh, come out here and see if I can get some uh, uh, T-shirts for like Grizzlies or Tigers T-shirts, especially for my son. You know, we actually just bought a flag here, a new Tennessee flag. We uh, have a uh, Smokey that we put up in their yard. Although some sports fans would rather be at home watching football, the fans who make their way to the Germantown Festival are sure to find some festival goodies that would make any sports fan happy. Many vendors at the Germantown Festival are selling a variety of items for you to represent your favorite teams. 
From big flags to little tissue boxes, there is something for every sports fan to buy. Uh, I would say the Memphis Tigers and Tennessee Volunteers would be my number one seller. Uh, right behind that would be Alabama. Cowboys, the Steelers, they always sell real well. University of Memphis. I really think that I have a unique product. Um, I haven't seen a lot of spirit scarves anywhere, and there seems to be a lot of you know team items here, and people are really kind of in the market for that. Another great buy for sports fans is the handmade outdoor furniture. Coolers, outdoor chairs, and more for any sports fan are being sold right at the Germantown Festival. And we've sold a lot of Chicago Bears, Denver Broncos, and Mississippi State, Ole Miss. So we've sold a lot of these. Several people have stopped and asked specifically about different teams. So, uh, you know, I, I can say that to you. that. So as the football season starts, the Germantown Festival is a great place to fill your sports gear needs. I'll say this, go Vols and go Devils. Reporting live from the Germantown Festival, I'm Kennedy Harris. Thanks, Kennedy. If your favorite NFL team doesn't play until Monday night or is already having a rough time on the field, head on out to the Germantown Festival grounds before it closes at 6 p.m. this evening. <laughs> now, Cooper Young, Overton Square, and East Memphis. Now, these are all neighborhoods that you've probably heard of. Something new in Memphis seems to pop up every day. City Leadership Media Coordinator Michael Phillips joins us today to talk about some of the fun things you might not have known about Memphis. Uh, Mr. Phillips, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me here, guys. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So can you kind of tell me, what is, uh, what is Cedar, uh, City Leadership? Yeah, so City Leadership, we're basically a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits. Nonprofits are really good um, at doing uh, a lot of things, feeding the homeless, reaching into particular communities. A lot of times they're not as good. Um, at telling people what they're doing, how they're doing it, what successes they have. So we just sort of help them with media sorts of services, videos, websites, etc. Uh, we're also well known uh, for the Choose 901 campaign. That's the biggest thing that people know us for. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, I mean, I see Choose 901 stickers all over the city. Oh, you know? yeah. Just, so can you kind of tell me how, how did Choose 901 kind of form itself into what it is today? Sure. I, we just saw that Memphis... Um, there's a lot of opportunity for young, talented people to see Memphis as what it is, which is it really can be a destination for people to mm -hmm. come here, young professionals. And for people who are from here, instead of thinking they have to go somewhere else to find an opportunity, to realize that there are lots of opportunities here in Memphis. So we say simply, we believe that Memphis is the premier destination to invest and enjoy your life. So we just believe that that's really true. It has great neighborhoods. You can really know who the people you're around, and you can have a blast while you're here doing that, yeah. as well as addressing some of the big needs that urban urban centers across the country yeah. are dealing with. And I think that's, I, I mean, I think it's so exciting because, you know, myself, like a lot of other people in Memphis, they didn't really know what was in their own city, you know, until they really started exploring. And, you know, obviously I found this whole other side of Memphis that I never knew about. But wh how or why do you think over time Memphis has, you know, I guess really changed? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, what Memphians think about Memphis has changed more than Memphis has changed itself. There's certainly a momentum building. There's certainly something mm -hmm. happening here, but I think that it comes down um, to people who are here, uh, who love the city, and who realize that there's great work that can be done. There's challenges and opportunities here, but it's really easy to enjoy yourself and have a great time while you're here. And New York or San Francisco or Los Angeles or uh, even Nashville, a lot of these places people think like, oh, that's a cool city. I have to go there and be a part of what's happening. You know, what they don't realize is how hard life is there, what it's like to sit in traffic for hours to get to work, mm -hmm. what it's like to have to wait for a train to come get you. What it's, you know, those things make life more difficult. And in Memphis, you can have an ease of living and you can have the opportunity to really, at a young age, get involved, wow. do important work, and it's not like you have to sit here and suffer. There's right. great restaurants, great events, great festivals like this one. Yeah. You can just come be a part of a lot of great things happening and do important work that's meaningful. And we need, you know, we need young folks who want to be a part of that to be in Memphis. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, you, you touched on, you know, other big cities and you did list a lot of comparisons, but, you know, how else does Memphis, you know, compare to those, you know, say New York, you know, we've got, I know we've got great shows, but, in, compared to Broadway in New York and great places to eat and music but you know how else does it compare you know the cost of living and whatnot sure yeah I mean that's a big one the cost of mm -hmm. living we're consistently rated as one of the lowest cost of living cities in the country right and what that really means is that you have the freedom to pursue what you want to do and do that work that's important a lot of times it can be hard to do the work that you believe in oh, yeah. because you may not make a ton of money well Memphis is a place where you don't have to have a great 
salary mm -hmm. necessarily to continue to have a high quality of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the low cost of living is one that's really big. Uh, there's also been a lot of discussion recently. Uh, Memphis was ranked, I think, by Forbes as the number five best city for entrepreneurs in the country. There's a, there's a lot of energy and momentum here yeah. that allows people to be able to come here and do something great Mm -hmm. And they can be scalable to anywhere they want to do it in the country. Honestly, yeah. And Memphis right. has a history of that. You look at, uh, you look at uh, uh, the hotel chain uh, Holiday Inn started here. Look at Piggly Wiggly. I mean, I know these are these are names that people don't necessarily associate with Memphis, but they started here in Memphis. They were people who weren't necessarily from Memphis. They came to Memphis. They had an idea. They pursued that idea. They were able to make it work. And then it, now it's well known around the world. What people don't realize mm -hmm. with Piggly Wiggly. As they changed the way supermarkets do, I oh, mean, there yeah. wasn't uh -huh. a supermarket exactly. before. And that happened here in Memphis. Yeah. Memphis has a history of innovation. And you're seeing that now in the education sector. There's so much happening in, in our education system. Mm -hmm. People are having an array of options. And the scores that have just come out in the newspapers, people have seen it. Kids are getting out. Those schools are coming out of those priority. And mm -hmm. they are going up to higher levels. And they are making real progress. And that's because of a lot of the innovation that's happening here. Yeah. So we're just continuing that legacy that we've had of really being a city that, where innovation can happen and there's room for people who have innovative ideas to really experiment and do them. And it is, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's very exciting to see the city that we live in change. Yeah, you know, in innovation is one of the things we really focus on within our studio and I guess, I guess our school, but specifically our studio. So it, it's, it's amazing to see how that reflects in the community and then within, you know, our organizations and stuff. So I, I guess, I'm going to kind of put you to the test here. Sure. You know, kind of see, see if you really know about Memphis. Okay. So can you kind of tell me what's something that you love about Memphis that not necessarily anyone walking around today would really know about? Well, I'll say this. Uh, you know, I, we live in the Tucker Jefferson neighborhood, my wife and I do, with our daughter, uh, which is sort of sandwiched between Overton Square and Overton Park. And I love that I live in a neighborhood where my neighborhood, where my neighbors don't necessarily look just like me. But yet I know all of them. We all talk to each other. We see uh -huh. each other. We walk to the grocery store and walk past each other. Oh, yeah. We, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, my, one of my neighbors is a guy who runs um, the barbecue shop. So oh, I, get to, yeah. I get to walk down the street to go eat great Memphis barbecue, right? At a place that's not, that, that a lot of people know about who are from Memphis, but it maybe doesn't have the international name that some others do. Right. And I go down there and I get to sit down and Eric will come over and say, hey, Michael, how's it going? And we get to have a conversation because we're neighbors and we're in a local restaurant. That's what Memphis is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the amenities of a big city, but it feels like your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. People really know you. And that's what I love about Memphis is feeling like I'm in a place where I really get to know people, you know, and be able to be a part of the great work that's happening in the city. And yet it feels like a neighborhood. It feels like a small town sometimes. Almost. I agree. I mean, it is it is very exciting. and. Thank you once again for coming on today. Thank you. Wonderful conversation. Great. Thank you guys thank so you. much. We appreciate it. I'd like to thank Michael Phillips for joining us today and telling us more about this great city that we live in. If you want to know more about City Leadership, you can visit their website at cityleadership.org. Now we are going to switch focus and talk to Kate Galani on the festival grounds. Kate? Thanks, Sydney. Do you want to find quality handmade artwork that all your guests will enjoy? Well, Ray's artwork has exactly what you need. I'm here with Richard Ray. Hey, Richard. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. So tell me more about this, uh, this art that you have. Well, it's fountains, like a water fountain, glass bird feeders, stained glass wind chimes, nativity scenes, and a lot more. Just... So what's the process when you're making these uh, glass artwork? Well, one of the biggest things is finding the glass, finding the vintage glass the fountains are made of, and wife does that, Martha, she finds the glasses and what we need and I put it together by, you know, building the framework and coming up. And Approximately how long does it take to make one of these? It depends anywhere from a day to a day and a half, two days. How did you first get involved in this type of art though? Well, my wife wanted one, she creamed it up, but she wanted one in the yard. So we built one, put in the yard, it's been there six years. Wow. Is there any certain item that's been, you know, a favorite this week, uh, this weekend at the festival? Mostly the fountains. Mm -hmm. That's been our favorite item. Okay. So, is this your first time at the festival? First time here. How do you like it so far? Like it fine. Good people. Awesome. So, if somebody wants to buy a fountain from you but they can't make it to the festival, is there any way they can contact you? Well, they can go to, on Facebook, raise artwork, and we got some of our stuff. We got a schedule of where we'll be. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So if you want a piece of artwork that will have all your friends talking, come to Ray's Artwork. Back to you, McLean. Thank you, Kay, for another great update on what is happening at the grounds. Andrew Mitter is a new teacher at Germantown High School. This chemistry teacher's students have high praise for him both in the classroom and out, and we are thrilled that he's taking the time to perform on the show today. Here's Andrew Mitter singing Georgia. heard a man say He said peace is divine And he was headed south So was I So I caught a ride to Georgia In the summertime Oh, me and Georgia Along with the sweet she wasn't perfect, but how could I decide what's wrong and right, wrong and right, Georgia in the summertime. If I could go back now, go back in time. the days of last summer and relive those nights oh I fall in love with Georgia in the summertime oh me and Georgia along with those sweet clean eyes I know she wasn't perfect but how could I decide what's wrong and right Wrong and right, Georgia in the summertime. A wonderful performance from Andrew Mitter. Can you believe he teaches chemistry? Oh, it's, it's crazy to think about that. <laughs> Expect to hear from more from him from after the break. Now, stay tuned. We still have some great guests, talent, and interviews to come. I'm Chris Barnell. Reporting from Moscow. Tbilisi. Times Square. May your dreams be your only boundaries in life. Watch your favorite Germantown community television shows from anywhere in the world. GHS TV is streaming online, live 24 7. A viewing screen displays our channel just like you see on television. Simply visit our website at www.ghstv.org. So log on and enjoy hometown news from anywhere in the world, only at ghstv.org. Hello and welcome back to Germantown Festival 2014. I'm your host, McLean Mayers, and this is my co-host, Sydney Armstrong. Just before the break, we heard Andrew Mitter give a great performance of Georgia. He's here with us now. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Hi. Oh thank my you gosh, for having your, me. Your performance yeah, no problem, was yeah. fantastic. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> thank you. So you recently came from Indiana where you had a band? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've played in several bands, but I also was the, the leader of a band. We played Southern rock indie music. Mm -hmm. So what, what brought you here? So my wife is a family physician, and she mm -hmm. got a job 
at Baptist Women's Hospital. Mm -hmm. So she moved here and we moved here because of her job. Okay. So when I first approached you about being on the show, I, I had emailed you, you know, just asking if you'd be interested, and you responded with a list of all the instruments you play and which one you wanted me to, <laughs> which one I wanted you to play. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I wasn't expecting this. So what instruments do you play? Remind me. And uh, how did you how did you learn all of those? So I play the trumpet, upright bass, guitars. Um, and keyboard. That's why I claim to play, <laughs> and I sing as well. I never really had formal lessons. Mm -hmm. I was just very musical, and I guess I just understand instruments starting from a young age. So I just picked mm -hmm. up whatever I wanted, and I could make music with it. Who wow. introduced you to music? Like I guess instruments and whatnot. Actually, uh, my father was a guitar player for a little bit, so okay. he actually kind of started me down the road on trumpet. And as far as influences go, I have a huge man crush on John Mark McMillan. He's an artist from South Carolina. Okay. I, just, I love everything he does. Okay. So aside from being a musician and a teacher at Germantown High School, you also skateboard? Ah, you yes. Do, you do everything. Yeah. So. I uh, had a recent accident oh, this week. Oh, there no. we go. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. It's all part there of the go. trade. Yeah. Comes with the territory. Yeah. We, we had a, a friend last year. We were going... We did... Fools, the, the fall play, uh -huh. and um, we had a friend who was going to be in it, got in a skateboarding accident, busted his leg, so. Uh, <laughs> he was out, yeah, I mean, but obviously, I mean, that's that's just part of, all, obviously, the passion of the sport, so kind of right. tell me, you know, obviously, you're this, you are this maestro with the music, kind of tell me how you got into <laughs> skateboarding. So, I got into skateboarding my junior year in high school, my friends started doing it, and I would consider myself a lifelong learner. I love learning different aspects of life. Mm -hmm. Like, I love to bird watch. I love music. I love math and science. I, I mean, I have a chemistry degree. That's why I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm just fascinated by all these different things. And I'm really intrigued by physics. So skateboarding, to me, it's great because it's something I can do whenever I oh, want. Yeah. Um, and it's not just like a general sport where you're competing against someone else, but I'm competing against myself trying to master the laws of physics and having a great time doing it. Okay, well, like I said, you seem to do everything. So I heard your first job out of college was for NASA? Yes. What the that, heck is that, that, is that about? That is out of this world, no pun intended. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was very honored. My, my research professor at Purdue University, where I got my undergrad degree, mm -hmm. recommended me for this job with NASA. Mm -hmm. And so I was performing nanotechnology research. Oh my gosh, what, oh. what the heck is that? <laughs> so nano is a prefix that means one times 10 to the negative ninth. Right. So very small. We're talking on the level of atoms and biology, cells, mm -hmm. things like that. So my research was coding strands of DNA with metal and then treating it like a conductive wire. Wow. And then measuring the resistance on that mm -hmm. wire to find out which metals would conduct the best with the least resistance. Well, that's fantastic. I'm actually interested in going into the sciences myself, but thank you. <laughs> that's beside the point. Thank you so much for being on yeah, the thank you. show today. It's awesome fantastic to have you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mitter, for taking time to be on the show. With around 50,000 visitors expected on the grounds this weekend, prime parking spaces can be at a premium. Thankfully, organizers stepped in to offer free shuttle bus services from two convenient locations. Student reporter Jasmine Salisbury and videographer Ethan Morton climbed aboard these festival shuttles to learn more about this welcome service and the many people who use it. There are many attractions that locals come to the Germantown Festival for. I purchased some personalized Christmas ornaments, um, some Christmas gifts that I can't really say. Last year we bought some um, charitable wall art. The running of the wieners is really cool. Aside from the many vendors available, the city provides transportation for the festival goers. I love it. I think it's a huge opportunity for individuals to park at a certain location and be shuttled up rather than fight to find a parking spot close by. The free air conditioned shuttle bus offers a convenient way to and from the festival grounds. People and animals alike appreciate the shuttle services. I can honestly say just driving over here, I was kind of skeptical about what the traffic was going to be like and it was so smooth, quick. It's absolutely eliminating a lot of traffic. I think it's great. I park all over Midtown all the time, and uh, it's hard to walk, so this thing shuttling you back and forth is awesome. There are four shuttles that run in a continuous circle, 
from Union University and GPAC back to the festival grounds driven by volunteer bus drivers. I think this is my fourth or fifth year. I like uh, working with people and uh, enjoy riding with them and, uh, and, and taking them places. This is your bus driver, Uncle Bill. It's mandatory now that we have fun. Sit back and relax and enjoy yourself. We ought to be in Disney World in a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting from GHS TV, I'm Jasmine Salisbury. Thanks, Jasmine. Parking and free shuttle services are available until 6 p.m. at the Germantown Performing Arts Center and Union University Germantown campus. The Chamber of Commerce has played an important part in all that is Germantown, from bringing local businesses together to developing individuals into the best that they can be. I'd like to welcome Janie Day from the Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Day, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Glad to be here. So, kind of tell me, this year, obviously, the, the year has just started school-wise, so right. kind of tell me. What is going on with the Chamber of Commerce? Well, we just had our uh, first event called Night Rider. I don't know if you all knew about it, but um, we partnered with Parks and Rec of the city, okay. and we had families come decorate their bicycles with glow-in-the-dark things and oh, bows and whatever. That sounds a lot And it of fun. was a family fun bike ride. We started at GPAC and went all the way through the new Wolf River Boulevard after dark. Mm -hmm. So it was a great event. It was our first time. It was our inaugural event. Wow. But we did have it in August. Next year we're going to have it in October. Ooh, <laughs> It'll be, be nice. cool, yes, and uh, <laughs> probably in a different location, but stay tuned because nice it was a fall evening. Yeah, it's our way of helping the community, and the uh, proceeds went to the new uh, REACH program mm -hmm. that the elementary schools have with Parks and Rec. So Actually, it was a great I event. think my mom did that, the Night Rider thing. Yeah, she might have. Yeah. 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 yeah, I had, I had to had babysit, so. We had, <laughs> we had lots of adults. It was fun. Very so, fun. kind of tell me, I mean, but how many people were there? We had about 120 riders. Wow. And it That's... was our way of helping the community. Our next event is um, called Taste of the Town. And that it sounds is fun. about. That, yeah, 30, that already yes, sounds out. Does yeah. that tell you what it is? <laughs> There's about 30 food and beverage vendors from interim to. Um, Elwood Shack uh, and others that are white tablecloth all around town, mm -hmm. not just Germantown, but from downtown, Seasons 52, Midtown, okay. all around. And the we have a live auction, and that those proceeds go to Make a Wish, and then our silent auction, those proceeds come to the chamber. It's a very it's our 14th annual event. Wow. We're very excited to have it again. When did you say that was? It's September the 21st. Oh, yeah. oh okay. So and it's at right the Hilton, up. so it's coming up shortly. Well, that, I, I'm sure people cannot wait for that. I'm sure that is something that they definitely mark on their calendars. Yeah, yeah, yes, they do, year, year after year. And we started it so that we could highlight our chamber member restaurants who can't come to some of our events during the day. Okay, so obviously, I mean, Germantown Festival is a huge part of the yes. city. I mean, this. I mean, the city pretty much shuts down for this weekend. <laughs> so can you kind of tell me, I mean, how, how is the chamber really involved with Germantown Festival? We have a tent here and we invite our chamber members in different times, like two hour time frames, mm -hmm. that they can come and talk about their products, have brochures, and we have sm our small to medium uh, businesses that actually do take advantage of that. It was a little rainy yesterday, but they were still there. <laughs> so, um, and we have small to medium sized businesses that do come and talk about what they do. So we provide that free to our chamber members yeah. to I, come to our tent. And I think, you know, for some of those people, I mean, this is this might be the first time they've, they've ever heard of the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. So can you kind of tell me, I mean, what what is really the chamber's goal in the city of Germantown? Our role is actually our mission statement, which is really to work with the businesses in the community. We provide networking at each one of our events, from our business after hour events to our monthly luncheons. Mm -hmm. We have lunch for you, where you can network. We have lunch, uh, lunch and learn that some of our area businesses put on a free seminar. So we have about six things to do every single month to help our businesses network with each other and do business with each other. And that's our role okay. with the city. So, I mean, tell me, I mean, what what kind of businesses are we kind of looking at? Are they, are they Germantown based or are they the city of Memphis based? We have uh, chamber members from downtown okay. to Midtown to 
Lakeland, Collierville, oh, Germantown. Yeah. We are a city. Germantown area chamber of commerce. So we really support all the businesses. And But we do definitely try to do business with every local restaurant and every small to medium sized business. Large businesses are involved also, such as the hospitals and, and uh, large companies also, but they're giving back to the community that has supported them. So that's where the array comes, small, medium, and then the large businesses are coming and supporting the chamber. Campbell's Clinic, uh, the, um, all the hospitals, Germantown Baptist Rehab, so that's really why they're involved and they're giving back. Yeah, wow, the community's so involved. It's, yes. Yeah, it's I mean, awesome. Very much so. So kind of tell me, I mean, if, 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 if I'm starting a business and I want to get involved with the Chamber of Commerce, right. well, what is kind of that process? The process is to give us a call or you can sign up online and it depends on the size of the business as what the cost is. For a small business that has one to ten employees, mm -hmm. that's $275 a year. And that in, in gets you the luncheons to come to, all the business after hours, all the events that we do have. And uh, it really, it, you have to participate though. If you just pay the $275 and don't show up, yeah. you're not helping yourself. So right. it's an inexpensive way to market, but you have to market yourself or send someone from your business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're there for networking. And that's, you can go online and find all the events we have. And you can also call the chamber and we can give you an idea of what's coming up. Okay. Well, I mean, these, these businesses, I mean, you, you are involved with so many businesses. I mean, just right. saying from all the areas that you're involved with, it's, right. it's ginormous. So I guess, <laughs> can, can you kind of tell me, you know, what are, what are a few specific like relationships that you think have really grown over the years? We have lots of businesses that are just one or two people and within several uh, networking events after maybe two or three years, we have seen that they've grown their business to 20 employees, oh, that's excellent. 30 wow. employees, and some niche businesses that only one person has come up with the idea. Mm -hmm. We have seen one business who um, actually delivers something to your home and uh, it's something that we would use every day that you normally have to go to the grocery store to get. He delivers it to your home, and he has grown to where he has about 500 customers just in wow. one year. Oh my gosh. Wow, so, that is, yes. That's so excellent. we are very yeah. instrumental in being a catalyst for uh, launching those businesses. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, are there, I mean, you, you kind of spoke on earlier about, you know, these lunches. Mm -hmm. So can you kind of talk about, I mean, what's kind of going on at these network Luncheons. We have a monthly luncheon that is starts at 11.15 at Germantown Country Club and the networking is from 11.15 to about 12 o'clock mm -hmm. and then the, the procedure is actually we have speakers. Last month we had the National Civil Rights Museum okay. as a speaker and she did a PowerPoint presentation on how things have changed and what has happened down mm -hmm. there. We've had Mayor Luttrell, we have had uh, people from Washington so we have wonderful speakers that come to our luncheon that people would definitely like to talk about wow. well thank you so much I sure I know I learned a lot more than I did coming into this interview about what really <laughs> right. the Chamber of Commerce does exactly thank, thank you thank you I'd like to thank Miss Day for giving us a closer look at what the Germantown Chamber of Commerce has to offer if you'd like more info for the Chamber of Commerce you can visit GermantownChamber.com Let's head over once again to Haley Bardo, bringing another inside look at the festival. Haley? Thanks, Sydney. What's better than finding a booth that is either, either creative, cool, or crafty? Finding one that is all three. Here with me, I am joined by one of the co-owners of This and That. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, thank you. Will you tell me a little bit about This and That? Well, it's just a hobby between two old ladies and we had to call ourselves something and we kept looking for a catchy name and somebody asked me what do y'all's make and sell i said oh a little of this and a lot of that and hey we got our name very clever way to come up with it how long have you been coming to the festival and what keeps you coming back this is the first year for us yeah first year now we did um uh the earlier one out at collierville we're doing this one we're going to be at cooper young next saturday and then we'll do ames plantation honey we're too old to do very many of them Four shows of a year is enough for us. And then we gotta, you know, we gotta get it made, so we do the sewing the rest of the time. How do you make all of your products? By hand on a sewing machine, and I crochet, knit, tat, whatever medium I'm working with, that's what I do. 
What has been your most popular item at the festival this weekend? My water bottle slings. My water bottle slings have a front pocket with a button for your credit card and your money. It has a back pocket to hold your cell phone. And then it has a specially insulated center part for your water, which actually, ladies, gives you hands-free shopping. And it doesn't get any better than that unless you got a husband to carry all the packages for you. <laughs> if people can't make it out to the grounds today, how else can they find your products? <laughs> They'd have to call me on the telephone. Because <laughs> like I said, it's a hobby between two old ladies. And uh, I can be reached at 901-497-7484. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate talking to you. You're welcome, sweetie. Make sure you stop by This and That, where you can find a little bit of this and a lot of that. Back to you, Sydney. Thank you for that information, Haley. Now, our next two guests are very involved with Memphis. Now, one is Miss Holly Whitfield. She runs the I Love Memphis blog. Second is Jason Miller, who is the director at the University of Memphis Art Museum. Mr. Miller and Ms. Whitfield, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> so, uh, Ms. Whitfield, can you kind of tell me, what is, what is the I Love Memphis blog? The I Love Memphis blog uh, was started by the Convention and Visitors Bureau in Memphis, which is just a big word that means the Tourism Bureau. And they want to tell people <laughs> that Memphis is a great place to visit and a great place to live with lots of fun things to do. So every day of the week, I'm the primary blogger. I'm the only blogger for the site, and mm -hmm. I write about events, news, culture, music, arts, food. I'm really busy with writing about everything that's going <laughs> on in Memphis and giving people reasons to love the city. Yeah. And so, Mr. Miller, I mean, obviously, both of you are very involved in Memphis, and you work at the University of Memphis. Can you kind of tell me? What's going on at the art museum right now? Um, we have Andy Warhol portraits, art and irony. And to clarify, Leslie Lubers is our director. I am the media specialist. I'm oh, okay. representing the director. Okay. Um, that show is about to come down. September 19th is Juvenile Injustice and Perceptions of Me opening together. Okay. Um, those are our two headlining exhibitions. They are extremely high profile because Juvenile Injustice deals with incarceration of minors right. and the loss of freedom that is inherent with that. Mm -hmm. um, Perceptions of Me is the more uplifting contrast of children who are being helped by groups such as Bridges and other community fixtures which are helping these children to find positive roles in their community and not fall into the incarceration factor. Of course. So I mean obviously are are any of the students involved with this? Like do, do they work at the museum? Do they help set up this this exhibition? We are a nonprofit at the University of Memphis and we do work regularly with students. These two exhibitions, one of which is brought in by a recent graduate from the Museum Studies program. Her name is Penny Dodds. She is the curator of Perceptions of Me, the show that is coinciding with Juvenile Injustice by Robert Ross. Wow, fantastic. Now, Miss Whitfield, I understand that while I love Memphis, you know, it's a it's a wonderful blog, but you are starting podcasts. That's and, right. And you were trying to get podcasts going. So can you kind of tell me, you know, what, what are your podcasts really talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the blog has been around for five years. We just celebrated our fifth anniversary in August. We had a big party. And I just took over the blog about a year ago. And something okay. I started earlier this spring was the I Love Memphis podcast. If you go to ilovememphispodcast.com, you can listen to all six of the podcasts that we have out, we've done this year. Every single month, we put out a new podcast. And when I say we, I'm talking about me and my co-host, Kevin Cerrito. Mm -hmm. And he is a sports and trivia expert. So we get together. We both love Memphis. We talk about what we're loving in Memphis that month, what's new that's going on. And then we have a guest, which is really the exciting part. Mm -hmm. We've interviewed Joe Birch from Action News 5. I'm sure okay. both of you know him. Yeah. Right. He was our very first yeah. guest. Um, we've interviewed Kat Gordon, who is the That's owner and founder Muddy's. of Muddy's Bake Shop. Mm. She brought us cupcakes. Delicious. Um, oh last gosh. month, we <laughs> talked with uh, two guys from the beer scene in Memphis, talking about all of the new uh, beer festivals and the new tap rooms mm. opening. So every month, we have a completely different guest. We've talked with uh, Mosiah Bridges, who is the CEO, the 12-year-old CEO of Mo's Bows. He makes bow ties. He's been on Oprah, oh, and then he was on our yeah. podcast. So that was a lot of oh, fun. That's so much fun. Yeah, so that comes out every month, and you can subscribe to it on iTunes or listen to it mm -hmm. straight from our website, ilovememphispodcast.com. Well, that's convenient. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess just from you naming off those names, it, it really made me think about how, I mean, it just seems like everything and anything is really going on in Memphis right now. It's I a mean, really exciting time. Yeah, I mean, for it sure. really just seems like with, you know, Music there, there, there is food. a huge art movement yeah. going on, and there and there's just, I mean, there's just a huge Memphis movement right now, I guess. So <laughs> I guess if both of you kind of want to talk about how is that affecting, I guess, each of your different organizations? Would you like me to go first? Sure, yeah. Um, well, you know, the Art Museum of the University of Memphis is not far from David Luss Gallery, where right now Greeley Myatt just launched a great show of sculpture work. Then we've got at Linda Ross, just down the street, Carl Moore, amazing paintings. And then at our museum, which is hidden in the middle of campus, when people visit it, they see our monumental Egyptian collection. We have so much there, and it's hidden in the middle of campus. Um, the art scene is amazing right now. And the Geisman mural by Jason Miller was just finished. Um, we've had so many great things happening right now. Yeah. Sounds like it. Well, for me, when, it's just me writing every day, so there's yeah. so much for me to write about. I wish there were like 20 of me because there's just so much <laughs> going on in Memphis right now. Um, I think that when the blog started five years ago, it was kind of revolutionary for somebody to stand up and say, hey, I love Memphis. We have our problems, but I love it. Yeah. Um, now, I don't think it's necessarily revolutionary anymore, but people still um, want to find ways that they can enjoy the city. They want to know things to do. Every single Friday, I give people a list of five things to do that weekend, and it's family-friendly things, things that are fun for students, things that are fun for grown-ups. Mm -hmm. And so I think that just because there's so much to talk about, it's a really exciting time for me to be doing the I Love Memphis blog. Yeah. So, I mean... Now, I do understand that, I mean, but you said that you took it over last year. Right. So how did you really kind of come to that? Like, like, were you close to the person that started the blog and you just kind of just took it over? Well, it's a full-time job from the Convention and Visitors Bureau, like I mentioned. And so Carrie Crawford was my incredibly talented predecessor that started the blog with mm -hmm. them. And when it was time for her to move on after four years, it was just a regular job. It was up on LinkedIn and job boards. I applied for it. I had no experience way. as a magazine editor and writer. Wow. And um, it was just an incredible opportunity for me to get to take over. So just like any other job, um, except for uh, I get to write about Memphis every day. Wow, that's, awesome. that's awesome. So kind of tell me, I mean, what are what are some things that you, that you guys like to do in Memphis? Oh my gosh, there are tons of things. Well, the Germantown Festival today has been a lot of fun. It has, it, it, <laughs> has, it has been a lot of fun. Were it, you here yesterday at all? No, I didn't. There is a big I missed contrast the downpour from yesterday, yesterday yeah. to today. <laughs> you missed there the rain. Is. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I guess outside, I mean, Overton Square. I oh, mean, yeah. Overton yeah. Square. I mean, it is amazing now. If you look back five years ago, it has been so developed. The developers did such a wonderful job. It has so many great restaurants now. It's just, I would recommend anybody visiting Memphis or from Memphis go there at least once a week to be uplifted. It's yeah. awesome. I agree. It's a really energetic space. And the Love It Shell concerts are free oh, concerts yeah. every single uh, weekend. Yes. It's a really good family-friendly activity <laughs> yeah. to do as well. Some people say there's nothing for families to do in Memphis, and I find that hard to believe because there are tons of free concerts, affordable events. I mean, mm -hmm. really, if there's something that you're into, whether it's music or art, you can find it in Memphis. Absolutely. Definitely. Now, but before we go, I, I understand there's a mural being finished. There is. Um, I was the director of a mural project called the Geisman Mural. It's on Macon Road. It's at a Memphis-run community center called Geisman Community Center. Um, it's a large scale, over 75 feet wow. of running space of this outdoor mural. It may be visited 24-7. Um, it's When people visit it, they say it actually reflects the nature and the community that occurs on a daily basis at Geisman. Wow. Sounds like something I need to Instagram. That is so exciting. <laughs> very exciting. Well, yes. thank you both for coming on the show. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank Jason Miller and Holly Whitfield for joining us. If you'd like more information on the Memphis Art Museum, you can go to memphis.edu. And if you'd like to find something fun to do in Memphis this month, go to ilovememphis.com. Kaif Galani now brings us another unique vendor on the festival grounds. Kaif? Thanks, Sydney. Are your children spending too much time behind a screen? Do you want them to find better ways to engage themselves? Backwoods Toys has the solution. I'm here with Ann Smith, owner of Backwoods Toys. Hey, how are you, Ann? I'm just fine. So, you know, what type of toys do you sell here? We have bow and arrows, marshmallow shooters, ping pong ball shooters, uh, rubber band guns, and slingshots. So how do you make all these toys? Well, we, we work in all the time making them. I buy the wood, I put the pattern on there, then I get the saw out and cut them, and put them all together, sometimes paint them. 
So how long have you been coming to the festival? Over 25 years to this festival. Wow, what keeps you coming back for so many years? Well, we let a good crowd here. We just love it here. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if people can't make it out to the festival today, uh, is there any other place where they can catch you, or is there another way they can buy your products? Yes, I do several shows in the Memphis area. As a matter of fact, I'll be at Cooper Young Festival mm -hmm. next Saturday, and I also have a website. It's backwoodstoys.etsy.com. So what is your most popular toy? Well, I'd say it's this bow and arrow mm -hmm. and the marshmallow shooters. All kids want one. Maybe their parents don't want them to have it, but they want it. And I, and I see you have some face paint on your yeah. cheek, too. You, you I'm guys also do. a face painter. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you so much. If you have little girls or boys, come down to Backwood Toys. Thanks. Back to you, Sydney. Thanks, Keith. Make sure to head on over and check out this booth. We have to take a short break, but when we return, we will hear from guests, talent, and much more. Live from Germantown Civic Club Complex, it's GHS TV's live coverage of the 43rd Annual Germantown Festival, the largest arts and crafts festival in the Mid-South. And now, here are your hosts, McLean Mayers and Sydney Armstrong. Welcome back to GHS TV's live coverage of the Germantown Festival. We've had a lot of amazing guests on today's show, and, are and we are expecting more to come. I'm your host, Sydney Armstrong, and this is my co-host, McLean Mayers. Now, our next guest spends a lot of time in the outdoors. I would like to welcome Betsy Peterson from Shelby Farms. Hi. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. No problem. So, tell me, what's going on at Shelby Farms Park? Oh my goodness, there's so much happening right now. We have an expansion project going on right now. Um, I've seen we're, that. Yeah, yeah, you've seen a lot of dirt yeah. moving around. There uh -huh. is. Really crazy. Um, we're expanding Patriot Lake and getting ready to build a new visitor center, oh, wow. restaurant retreat center, events pavilion. There's tons going on with that. Wow, and so was there, has this been in the plans for a while to happen and then it really just started happening this year? Or yes. was this really like, I, I guess, for the moment? Spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. Well, we. Um, Planned, we have a master plan that was set in 2007, and we've been fundraising for the past year. It's a $50 million project, okay. wow. and so we're $3 million away, really close, <laughs> and we've already started broken ground, as you can tell, yeah. um, moving really fast and starting to build a new visitor center this winter. Wow, so the, when are the plans for, for all this to open up? Um, late in 2016. Okay. So it's a two-year project. Mm -hmm. wow. That'll include the new expanded lake, all the new facilities. It's going to be a really exciting project. Wow, that, yeah, I mean, that's, that sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so kind of tell me, what are, some, what are some attractions that are going to be going on right now at Shelby Farms Park? Right now, there's a lot happening. We have some new programs for all ages. We have a mommy and me class, um, a dog's training class, a canine course, mm -hmm. um, Tai Chi for the elderly. So oh, wow. lots of programs. And then we have our big fall event, Spooky Nights, coming up, which is going to be wow. amazing. There's a haunted trail, the only one in the city. Oh, wow. It's really terrifying. Um, <laughs> and there's pumpkin painting and nature hikes. There's a ton going on at the park for everyone. Wow. So tell me, um, obviously, I mean, this, this is going to be a very spooky trail that's going on in, in October. So tell me, is, is, it, is it safe for all ages? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will warn you, I was terrified last year, and it's bigger and scarier this year. But um, no, it's for all ages, the younger kids that their parents approve. But there are over 200 volunteers in the woods, and so oh there's creepy clowns wow. and people in hazmat suits. It's a really haunted trail. Oh, wow. I, I, I love, you know, scary, thrilling stuff, so <laughs> definitely to come out. have to go. I will, I will. <laughs> and if you go on Ticketmaster and sign up early, you get to skip all the lines. So we oh, encourage wow. you to sign up online. <laughs> Just get straight to the scares. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me, how many people are you going to be expecting to see? Oh, goodness. Well, it's happening every Friday and Saturday in October. Okay. So as many people as we can. I don't know how many people came last year. It's about 5,000 plus. Um, wow. We have over 200 volunteers involved and always looking for more. And there's something for all ages. On Halloween, there's a trunk retreat. So it's a safe environment. We partnered um, 
with people to decorate their trunks and have a safe trick or treat. There's wow. pumpkin painting, nature hikes, um, where you learn about nocturnal animals and see the stars. So wow. it's something for everyone. Wow. So I guess one of the one of the really big things that I mean really stands out at Shelby Farms is obviously the Green Line, yes. which has become one of the most popular biking spots in the city. So kind of tell me, what was what was kind of you know the meaning behind starting that project and how has it evolved today? Mm -hmm. Well, the Green Line is really important to a lot of people in the city. For me, it's how I commute to work a lot of the time, oh, wow. um, and it's a six and a half mile trail that we really wanted to build so that anyone and everyone can come to the park. Before the Green Line was built, unless you lived close to the park, you had to drive by car. And mm -hmm. so we really wanted to include everyone in the city, bring all people from all backgrounds to the park to enjoy the outdoors. So that's why we built the Green Line and the Wolf River Bridge to build more connections to the city. Wow, so are there, are there any certain at activities that kind of go alongside with the Green Line, like bike races or um, we talked with Miss Day and uh, she kind of talked about the the night ride? Are, are there specific mm -hmm. events that go on? Yeah, upcoming this month um, is the Green Line Half Marathon. So that is a really exciting trail that'll go along the Green Line, but then along other trails in the park as well. Mm -hmm. um, that takes obviously a lot of training. I'm not going to be up for a half marathon, but um, people, you see people biking and running along the Green Line every day. So it's, you can awesome. rent bikes at the park as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's yeah. tandem bikes we see people use, which is really fun. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> so touching back on, I guess, your guys' uh, changing park, you guys have a lot of wildlife, and then you also have the bison. So wh yeah. where are they right now? What's going on with all of them? Well, before we even started the lake expansion mm -hmm. project, we had to move the bison first. So they have a newly expanded pasture, which is really great. They've been on the same one for 40 or so years. Okay. And so um, we moved them before we started digging out the lake, and they're really happy about it. So you can come see them being fed along Farm Road. They're okay. loving their shade and the expanded pasture. I, I love seeing them. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're cute. Yep. So, I mean, obviously, the one, the one event that really sticks out for me is obviously Starry Nights. Yes. I mean, my parents have been taking, mm -hmm. taking me there and my sister for as long as I can remember. So kind of tell me, when does that process for getting that huge event but, but when does it get started? We're already starting preparing right now. Really? Um, we started building displays and putting on LED lights. We're the first light show in the in the country to go all LED. So it's over a million LED lights. It takes That's lots of preparation. Yeah. It's going to be a new course because of the construction. Um, so it'll be something new and exciting to see. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, I mean, is there? I mean, what 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 are some other things to go alongside with Star Nights? Like I know there are. Like, I mean, I used to go with my parents to get the hot chocolate and stuff. Mm -hmm. are, are there any other events that kind of go along with it? To it's do? been getting bigger and bigger every year. So we have a mistletoe village that adds local craftsmen each year. A woman who knits scarves and hats will be oh, there. Wow. Um, we partner with Mid-South um, Veterinary Specialists. So they usually have a booth for if you bring your pets with you. You can get out and walk around. There's a petting zoo. Um, oh my gosh, I'll go. <laughs> yeah. I love the animals. <laughs> Little goats and camels sometimes. So it's... Yeah. Lots of different things happening. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think you kind of touched on what my next question was. Um, how is Shelby Farms, how are they working with Memphis, I guess, to... I, Bring new I people I mean, to the yeah, park? Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. have um, partnerships that occur all throughout the year, especially with events. Um, people donate cups for our Greenland Half Marathon, or like I mentioned, Mid-South Veterinary Specialist partners with our dog park to mm -hmm. help keep it clean and safe for your animals. So, we just have a lot of great partners. Um, Orion is sponsoring Starry Nights. Um, wow. So we love our friends who help bring different people from all over the city to the park. And I, my final question, where, where do you see Shelby Farms in the future? Oh, goodness. The opportunities <laughs> are endless. In two years, right. it's going to be revitalized, and there's going to be a new heart of the park. Um, you can eat dinner along the lake and watch the sunset, sail wow. your sailboat in the lake. So the near future is very exciting. It's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking thank about you. Shelby Farms. Thank you for having me. Thank you to Betsy Peterson for coming on today. If you'd like more information, you can visit them at shelbyfarmspark.org. Just in case you're missing out on all of the fun that's going on here at the grounds, field reporter Haley Bardos has come to the rescue to bring another inside look at our day. Tell us what you've got, Haley. Thanks, Sydney. Do you want to support a good cause and get some goodies in return? If the answer is yes, the Germantown Women's Club is the booth you need to visit. Will you please tell me what you ladies are doing here at the festival today? 
Well, we are selling our, our baked goods, um, not limited to pies or cakes or cookies or muffins, gluten-free, sugar-free items. We have breads. We also sell homemade fudge and things like that, just, you know, treats that um, people will come by and pick up stuff for the office on, on Monday morning or for your, your morning breakfast or snacks or desserts for the week, whatever. So you ladies make all of these yourself? Everything's homemade. We've been doing this for years and years. We are the, the feature bake sale booth at the Germantown Festival, and we've been doing it for a very long time. Tell me about the Germantown Women's Club in general and what you guys are all about. The Germantown Women's Club, oh gosh, we celebrated our 65th anniversary last year. And uh, for example, the proceeds from our, our annual bake sale goes to two of the entities in Germantown that the Germantown Women's Club founded, and that would be the, the Germantown Community Theater and the Germantown Community Library, among a lot of other things that we, charitable endeavors we do throughout the year. How can people help support the Women's Club if they're unable to make it to the festival grounds? Well, um, you can help support us by showing up for Fun and Fright in October that is put on by the Parks and Rec um, group down at um, the, the park there. And we do concessions and we also do the concessions for the extravaganza in the fall or the spring, I'm sorry. So come on down to Parks and Rec's events. Uh, G Germantown Women's Club is usually doing concessions and that would be a big help. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. To fulfill your good deed of the day, come on over to the Germantown Women's Club booth. Back to you, Sydney. Thanks for keeping our viewers informed, Haley. So, you know, I guess really, you know, what... The, the rain? The, <laughs> Is that what you're exactly, <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, there's, there's no way to really get around it, but, you know, I still think even though it rained, I still think people had a good time. Oh, I had fun. You know, I was working over in Gameland for the PPP, and... Yeah, got absolutely drenched and then had to walk over to the studio freezing cold and makeup dripping down my face. But I still, <laughs> yeah, I know it, it was really pathetic. It was still a lot of fun though. And you know, I, I still saw, as soon as the rain was over, people were out, you know, walking the grounds and buying things and eating. Yeah, so and I, I don't think it really affected the and, grounds that And much. I really think that showed how popular Germantown Festival really oh, is yeah. with people. The, the fact that they just, they didn't leave. Well, some of them did leave, but a lot of them just hopped under a tent and waited till it stopped raining and kept on shopping. Oh, yes. <laughs> Laura Kearney is a familiar face to many of the fine arts students in Shelby County. Her vocal training technique and piano lessons have helped many of her students succeed in their musical endeavors and develop healthy singing and playing habits. She's a valued performer on today's show, and she's now ready to perform Quando Menvo.
stay with us to hear more from the talented Lori Kearney. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to have more, even an interview with GHS principal Barbara Harmon, so make sure to stay with us. Welcome to I'm Chris Barnell. Reporting from Moscow. Tbilisi. Times Square. May your dreams be your only boundaries in life. Watch your favorite Germantown community television shows from anywhere in the world. GHS TV is streaming online, live 24-7. A viewing screen displays our channel just like you see on television. Simply visit our website at www.ghstv.org. So log on and enjoy hometown news from anywhere in the world, only at ghstv.org. Welcome back to Germantown Festival 2014. I'm your host, McLean Mayers. And I'm Sydney Armstrong. We heard Lori Kearney's performance of Quando Menbo just before our interview with Barbara Harmon. Or, we're going to interview them later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, confusion. But she's here now with us, and so we're very thankful she's here. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. to be here. <laughs> and fabulous job on your performance. Yeah, thank you. fantastic. Thank I'm you. sure everyone heard you. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been involved with music? Since I was in high school, pretty much, uh -huh. you know, okay. high school choir with actually Nelva Thomas, who, you know, it's, wow, <laughs> yeah. Really? yeah, yeah, she was my choir director all four years at Millington. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are finding stuff out that we, that we never even <laughs> yeah. knew. This is, this, this is very different. Yeah, this <laughs> <is>. <laughs> so um, you, you give lessons now? I do. I give private lessons, um, have been for a couple years now, and I give private lessons out of my home in a number of different locations. So, okay. what, so what made you want to start teaching music and giving lessons to all these aspiring singers? Well, funny you should ask, actually it was Nelva Thomas who first inspired me to be a choral director. I loved choir when I was in high school mm -hmm. and I uh, majored in music education and taught choral music for a number mm -hmm. of years and then just decided I wanted to teach at home privately and mm -hmm. so now I've been doing that as well. Okay. All right, so you also, you conduct a choir at your church. I do, so, so I still get to do choir. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I conduct the choir at Cordova Presbyterian Church. I'm actually the music director there. Okay, and so what does what does that all entail? What does that what now? All entail. Like. Um, well, I, get, I do uh, choose the music for the choir, and we, um, of course, conduct them. We have Christmas cantatas, Palm Sunday cantatas, mm -hmm. and um, also just choose the music for the church, you know, any special guest musicians that we have come in. Okay, so back to your lessons, how would one go about scheduling a lesson with you? Scheduling, they could either um, call me directly, I have business cards I usually give out, but I also mm -hmm. have a website now that I'm using, it's kearney.musicteachershelper.com, okay. and they can go on there and then just register as a new student, that's free to register, and then that, that way they find out more about my policies and whatnot, okay. and decide if they oh, actually cool. want to go through with lessons. Alright, wow. so you mentioned your, your training with voice, but uh, specifically, could you tell me about you know your your background and that and like the training you've had uh, to get to get to the lessons to oh, giving lessons. lessons? Yes, yes. Well, I had training in college. Have to do private voice, so I had quite right. a few years of private voice lessons and have taken a few lessons here and there since. And mm -hmm. I also sing with Opera Memphis. I sing with their with their chorus um, from time to time and do some shows with a number of other that's cool theaters yeah. <laughs> here and there whenever I have time. <laughs> now, I I've heard you know when I've when I have tried and failed at taking guitar lessons numerous times, <laughs> but I have heard that playing and learning church hymns is actually a really great way to learn the basics of music theory. Mm -hmm. So have you found that that has kind of helped yourself and maybe kids that you are teaching today? I think so. I mean, just singing in church in general um, can help, can be can be of help, but singing in, in your school choir, I think, is a great thing because 
usually school choirs are meet every day on a daily basis, so you're getting daily training. Oh. Even if your school choir can only meet once a week or possibly twice a week, three times a week, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you're still getting so much more training. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. If, if you can even hear me, we got a train going <laughs> <Yeah>. by. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you being here and your performance was excellent. So thank you so, so much. Thank you. I want to thank Ms. Larry Kearney for being on the show today. Now, every student on today's crew is proud to be part of Germantown High School's um, our Red Double Pride or even more when the Tennessee Department of Education named, G named GHS a reward school ranking us among the top 5% of the schools in the state. Reporter Kafe Galani and videographer Sean Byrne tell us more about this latest honor. Barbara Harmon has seen many high points in her 30 years at Germantown High School. The GHS principal had even more good news to share when Germantown was selected as a Tennessee Reward School, the result of lots of hard work from her teachers. It all paid off and I was very, very pleased with um, the outcome. It's just the latest honor for Germantown High, whose history includes a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence, an International Baccalaureate World School, and one of Newsweek's best high schools in America. It's shown that we have progressed and our students are achieving and, and, and achieving better than some other schools. The math and English departments at Germantown have made strides in terms of test scores, but the teachers haven't done this by themselves. They work together in professional learning communities to form new and innovative ideas to engage students and prepare them for life beyond the classroom. Beyond just the, the, the numerous tests that you have to take, what are they going to be expected to do in college or in the future? Another program Harmon credits with the success at Germantown is the advisory period. Students are given a 30-minute block of free time twice per week where they can get extra help in math, English and other subjects. And some days I'll actually pre-teach something. So we're gonna do this tomorrow and all the kids in advisory will get a little heads up. Uh, well, one time during advisory, I went to Miss Geyer's room and she really helped me learn about how to, about trigonometry and how to find the angles of triangles. But teachers and staff aren't content with this latest honor. After all, they are well aware that high school is just the first step in a continuous journey for knowledge. I think we can con always continue to improve. We don't want to ever just step back and say, well, we've done it now, we can quit, because that's not going to happen. We've got to continue to work hard. We've got to continue to work with our students, help them to achieve uh, at the highest level they can. Um, and uh, we feel like that every student can learn. Reporting for GHS TV, I'm Kaif Gilani. Thanks, Kaif. And thanks to the teachers at GHS for dedicating so much of themselves to the success of our school. Joining us now is Germantown High School Principal Barbara Harmon. Ms. Harmon, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Glad to be here. So, I mean, tell me, I, when you found out that we were named a reward school, I mean, what was one of your first reactions? I was very, very excited, and I was also told that I, I couldn't tell anybody for a while, so I had to keep oh, it under... Oh, it was a secret. Yes, it was like a secret Christmas for a little while. And it was very hard for me not to go running down the halls and telling I'm sure. I everybody, mean, because we worked so hard for it. and. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very, very proud of it. I mean, I'm sure it was just kind of like a scene out of, you know, a little kid waking up on Christmas. <laughs> very much so, very much so, so. So when did you find out that we were named a, uh, um, a, a reward school? I, w I found out uh, in about the middle of August. Okay. Uh, and, and then they, right before the, the scores were actually reported and uh, before they actually went, um, before Tennessee actually released them, uh, we f I found out. Yeah. So I couldn't say anything until they were released. And what qualified our school for this amazing reward? Uh, our students uh, performed in the top 5% mm -hmm. uh, on achievement. Wow. And uh, so and I just, I, our teachers have done such a good job mm -hmm. and have encouraged our kids and they've taken it seriously and they did a really, really good job. Yeah. So the Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam, I mean, gave high praise to these reward schools. What does it mean that, I mean, in a sense that Bill Haslam was talking of saying these things about Germantown? It's wonderful. I yeah. mean, uh, we've, we've, I've always felt like that's, that's, we were a reward school and we finally mm -hmm. have been validated. And yeah. so I think that's wonderful. Yeah. So, and I guess one thing, you know, while Germantown is turning out well-educated students going, in, going into college and into the world, mm -hmm. one thing that, that I think, and, and I think that reward schools are producing are leadership skills. Absolutely. So what are some of these skills that these kids from Germantown are graduating with? 
Well, I think um, they are uh, learning to endure and to not uh, take setbacks, to keep on moving, mm -hmm. keep on working. Mm -hmm. uh, even when they um, have not maybe done as well uh, on uh, assessment one day, they keep trying and they'll improve. And, and then in the end, it shows that um, they can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, getting, getting to such a prestigious level as this, I mean, obviously, it takes, I mean, maybe, you know, years of building up your school to this to this wonderful level that it's at now today. Right. So w was this always a goal coming into it? It was always a goal, yeah. uh, always a goal. And, and mm -hmm. we have, for the last two years, have had straight fives on our on our evaluation by the state. And um, so our, it's because our teachers have really bought into the things they have to do to prepare our students. And um, I'm so proud of all of them, and I'm proud of our students uh, for what they've achieved. Yeah. So it's it's phenomenal to hear about Germantown, but it's it's even greater to hear that 39 Shelby County schools were given this exactly, award. Exactly, exactly. So I mean, while this is great for, for Germantown, how does this make Shelby County schools look? Well, I think it makes, I think it, it's a very, very good thing. I mean, yeah. I, I believe it looks like that that uh, students are making progress and, and they are uh, going where they should be and there's teachers helping them. Yeah. So, I, and I think one thing that, that I am also very impressed with it is that the graduation rate at Germantown mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not really something that, that I really looked at until this year now, now that I'm a senior, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's incredibly high. Uh -huh. So, I mean, tell us, you know, along with that, what are, what are some things that are going into allowing this graduation rate to be so high? Um, first of all, we have Ms. Odom as our senior counselor, and, and she's a bulldog. She, doesn't, she is. She will not let, she is. <laughs> she will not let students off the hook. Uh, she, she will, She'll follow them until, and, and drag them in and, and uh, get them to finish. And uh, that's, that's one of our biggest reasons that we've been able to do that. And then we've had, uh, we have interventions for students to help yeah. them so that if they get behind, we can get them caught back up. Yeah, and I think one of probably the biggest intervention is the advisory period, which, which was talked about earlier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and then that was, that was started when Dr. Ted Hora was here. Yes. And then you've, you've kept up with it. And yes. I, I think as a student's perspective, it has changed definitely over time. Uh -huh. I mean, it's more of not, not necessarily that you're failing. Uh -huh. It's a time to go get kind of extra help or extra help mm -hmm, or uh -huh. even just a brief of what maybe what's going on exactly. the next day in class or what went on that day in class. Exactly. Exactly. So kind of tell us, you know, with yourself and all the in administrators, how did that process come about? Um, well, when Dr. Horrell was here, he, he came up with this idea. Some other schools had tried it, and uh, so I was a little bit hesitant right mm -hmm. at first because I didn't know how that would work, but it's worked great. Mm -hmm. And I think these kids are getting extra time with their teachers, and um, right now we just feel like it's, it's been a really good intervention, and uh, it's really helped those students to, to want to do as well as they can because if they're... If they're not struggling at all, they can pretty much go to yeah. any teacher or any class, at AP, IB, wherever mm -hmm. they want to go and get just extra time with their teachers. So. No, I, I think I think that's great. You know, for the students who who don't need the extra help, but maybe just want it or just want that time to go over their homework exactly. or get caught up. I, I you know, as a, a student myself, uh -huh. I, I appreciate it yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, obviously, Germantown has been in the news lately, of course. So, kind of tell me about the three programs that Germantown really has now with the Kappa program and the AP program, and then of course the IB program, which is right. been, has done wonders for the school. Exactly, exactly. Being an optional school has been a, a real honor for, for Germantown. And uh, it's basically our IB program and our Kappa program. Uh, our IB program uh, can stretch into AP and honors, but it's all one program. It's actually two programs. And um, so we're very proud of it. And we've got yeah. some great kids at Germantown. And, and, and that's fantastic. I <laughs> Thank mean, you. <laughs> knowing, yeah, I mean, knowing that, that, that we are part of such a great absolutely, program absolutely. at Germantown. I mean, what, you know, going going into the future, what are your hopes with these three programs and with this reward status? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just hoping that it will help us continue to grow and continue to be successful. And um, I'm just hoping that we can continue with our successes, and uh, but not to take them for granted, but to keep on working hard. Yeah. And I think our teachers know that, and I, I believe they're all about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they've convinced their students as well. So I just want to continue what we our wow. successes. So, are I mean, was this kind of a like a game plan? I guess in the sense that like, I mean, all the teachers are on board with this with this method now. Mm -hmm. With, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's there's no there's no method to the madness. It, it is very clear cut now. Right. That this is that this is the future that you want Germantown to take. Exactly. So, can you tell me? I mean, 
What are teachers saying about this? Mm -hmm. Well, we have our, our, our uh, department chairs, which I, I meet with them about once a month, and then we have our four, uh, our core classes, which are English, math, science, um, and social studies. So I meet with them. So we are always looking for things that we can improve on and, and the new ideas that we can, that we can uh, try to uh, achieve. And so uh, they go back and talk to the faculty, but the faculty understands and they know how important those fives are. Mm -hmm. And so they really, really, uh, they're always looking for things to do that can, can uh, assure that we continue to do that. Yeah, and, and I think that has definitely paid off because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think last year, the senior class itself, I mean, has averaged out at over 22 million in scholarship Absolutely. money, which is, I mean, which is for us seniors, that, that is very exciting uh -huh, news uh -huh. that these seniors are, not only they're being accepted by the colleges of their choice, but they are getting money to, to go there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why do you think these students, like, why are colleges looking at these Germantown students and saying, wow, they, they've gone above and beyond? Well, I think a, a part of it is our IB program, because mm -hmm. that is the most prestigious uh, uh, degree that you could get in high school. And uh, they're going all over the United States to schools. And uh, I, I, they, they know the program, and we have a very, very uh, extensive and elite program, and they know that. And uh, it just gives them all, all kinds of opportunities to, yeah. to go anywhere they want to. Yeah, I, I mean, with, with the IB program, I mean, while, while it is, I mean, it, it is obviously very challenging, why, why do you think all these students now are coming from neighborhoods around Memphis to go to this IB program? Well, um, it, it, first of all, it is, it's a very difficult program, very, very difficult, mm -hmm. and uh, students will get into it, and only a few really will get through the very end of it. But we have the highest IB graduation rate in the state of Tennessee, so that says a lot. Yeah. Uh, but the students that get into it and find that it's a little bit more difficult, taking a little, because it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, mm -hmm. a lot of planning, mm -hmm. a lot of preparing. Yeah. Uh, but if they're wanting to do some other things, um, and, and this is, just a little bit too difficult, they can branch off into our AP and honors and still take IB classes and yeah. get certificates for those classes. Um, it just wouldn't be able to get that final degree, which, yeah. as I said, even then, we're still graduating the most in the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Of course. No, I, I moved here my sophomore year, and I, I moved from out of state, and uh, just, just joining this school, I, I've learned so much, you know, not just in, I'm, I'm in the production program mm -hmm. and heavily involved in the fine arts, but academically, I found that the teachers here are, are so much more personable than some of the teachers have had in the past and uh -huh. I, I just feel very much at home here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I guess what what advice could you say to students who are looking to come to Germantown or you know the middle schoolers who are who are coming here well I you know I consider Germantown high school family and yeah. I, I consider our, and that's what I say over and over again to our teachers and when I, I've spoken to the students you know I, I mm -hmm. consider it a very family oriented just good mm -hmm. um, just tight knit group of, uh, of faculty members, and they are they're very they're very good to their students, and um, they are they're just a nice group of people to work with. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, final question. I mean, where where are you seeing Germantown High School down the line? I'm, I'm seeing this just to continue to improve. Like I said a little while ago, I just I, I cannot see that we're we're going to do anything but improve and to and to grow and to continue. Now these new programs, the optional programs, uh, and Kappa. Uh, which has always been an optional program, basically. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. it's just now just got a name for it, and yeah. uh, and I just see it growing. Wow. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Well. Talking we about. We appreciate everything you do for our yeah. school thank and you. for being thank on the you. show today. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. that. I yeah. love it. <laughs> well, I would like to thank Miss Harmon for coming on, and it is great to see all that Red Devil pride. If you would like more information on Germantown High School or or joining its optional programs, you can visit SESK12.org. We're switching gears right now and heading back out to the field where field reporter Kaif Galani, who is, he has another great artisan. So, Kaif? Thanks, Sydney. I'm here with the Memphis Beekeepers Association, the vendors who have the entire festival buzzing about their honey. I'm joined by Mr. Robert Hodum, a member of the association. Hey, Mr. Hodum. Good evening. So, you know, what, what's the amount of time that it takes to get a batch of honey from the bees? The bees start making honey when the first flowers start blooming in the spring. Mm -hmm. With the number of bees in the colony it determines on how much honey they have. Uh, this is from early March. The honey that we're selling here was harvested in August. So yeah. it depends upon the number of bees in the colony and the location they're in. So I know that you're, you're, uh, you guys have been at the festival for many years now. What keeps you coming back so much? 
we, we have uh, several goals in our organization, mm -hmm. and one of them is to educate the public about the bees. Right. Uh, we sell honey, which is good for you if you're not a diabetic, but <laughs> our main goal is to educate the public here. Right. So why should people buy your honey rather than grocery store honey? Honey rather than grocery stores, our honey is basically local honey. Uh, most of it is uh, unfiltered. Most of it is without heat. Some people call that raw, but we have very little filtering processes for this honey to get on the market. Uh, that's different from some in the grocery stores. But uh, I know you guys sell other things besides honey. What else do you guys sell? Well, we sell a little wax sometimes. We sell honey straws. We sell honey candy. Uh, we, we sell candles at times also. So, you know, what's the process from the bee to the customer? How does the honey, how is the honey made? This is one product man can't duplicate. Right. The bee has to make the honey. Right. So we, once the bees collect enough honey and fill it up and get the moisture and content right, a box full, it's taken off. We use a knife to slice down each side of it. They'll seal it over. We slice mm -hmm. down each side, put it in a spinner that spins it around and around. I say similar to a washing machine, but it's a, usually a stainless steel, real nice, neat organization. Mm -hmm. Then it is strained through a strainer and it's put in a tank and it's bottled into these jars. Wow, that's a, that's a long process. But, you know, say somebody wants to buy your honey but they can't make it out to the festival today. Is there any way they can contact you or also buy this honey? The Memphis Area Beekeepers uh, support two festivals, mm -hmm. the Germantown and the Pink Palace. Okay. Uh, there is beekeepers that have honey, local honey in your Kroger stores, your Super Lowe's, uh, Easy ways that is local honey. If you go last for local honey in those stores, they'll be glad to support the local honey producers. This is an organization's honey here, and we, we're proud of the organization. Well, thank you so much. That's, that's great. You know, I actually had a chance to try some of this honey, and I love it. You know, it's great. So come on down to the Memphis Area Beekeepers Association's booth. You won't be disappointed. Thanks. Back to you, McLean. Thank you, Kay, for another excellent update from the field. And you know what? I, I think it's been awesome to see what Haley and Kay have been finding all day. I mean, there is so much to do at the Germantown Festival. I know. I mean, just looking around and, you know, for our viewers who can see, you know, the background of our shot, this is just a small, tiny, tiny oh, yeah. chunk of the people who are here. And, you know, I spent yesterday, you know, helping out where I could and, you know, shielding myself from the rain. But in between, <laughs> in between those moments, you know, I was walking through and talking to the people, the artisans and the vendors. And there's just, there's so much here to offer. I mean, you've yeah. got you've got clothes, you've got, uh, there's a stand over there, Happy Crabs, which oh, happy one, of, crabs. one of my personal favorites, if you haven't noticed, I'm, I'm oh, really yeah. liking the animals. <laughs> and and plus, I mean, it's been there for as long as I can remember. And, and, and I think that is one of the cool things about the Germantown festivals that while you find something new to do every year, I mean, you, you see the same stuff. Like there is still the same marshmallow gun. <laughs> you know vendor uh -huh. that i have seen since i've you know was like just 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 a little eight-year-old but mm -hmm. just a little wee mclean yeah yeah you know, i i feel i feel that it was unfortunate that i just moved here my sophomore year but I, i'm i'm very thankful to have been able to experience the germantown festival and i you know i'm going to experience it more i'm hoping to go to university of memphis so being able to uh stay in the area and have this to experience i think it's great you know there's also the golden retriever rescue oh my and gosh i yes. have a golden retriever so went over there and pet all the dogs one of the dogs yeah. name her name was shasta and just i'm just loving the community and you know, all the pets that are brought out and the, the people i'm seeing you know kids you know from little little tiny kids like my brother's age six and up to you know our age yeah. the kids and then there's the adults and the people working and i just I, I love the Germantown Festival. And I think, you know, that is something that I really love about Germantown is that, Definitely. you know, even though it rained yesterday, I mean, everyone still enjoyed it and everyone still had a great time. Definitely. Well, we have to take a short break. When we return, we'll have a chance to talk with our two field reporters and much more. Stay tuned. Good evening and welcome to the I'm Chris Barnell. Reporting from Moscow. Tbilisi. Times Square. May your dreams be your only boundaries in life.
You can now watch your favorite Germantown community television shows from anywhere in the world. GHS TV is streaming online, live 24-7. A viewing screen displays our channel just like you see on television. Simply visit our website at www.ghstv.org. So log on and enjoy hometown news from anywhere in the world, only at ghstv.org. Welcome back to the live coverage of the Germantown Festival 2014. You know, unfortunately, you know, we're nearing the end of the show. But Aww. if yeah, if you <laughs> just happen to be joining us, I'm Sydney Armstrong and this is my co-host McLean Mayers and we're we're enjoying our day today. It's been it's been a really great it's show. Nice. We've had we've had amazing people on. We've had great talent. I, I was surprised we had a chemistry teacher from Germantown High School who came on and we found out, you know, he worked for NASA and that for he can NASA. sing and play every instrument in the book. So, it's just it's been very and it, insightful. And it's so exciting, I think, you know, with some of the guests that we talked to today is that you know, not only Germantown, but Memphis is changing every single day. Oh my gosh. And we're finding yeah. about all these amazing things that are happening. I know. Like, well, for instance, the Jam Germantown Chamber of Commerce, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't aware of the fact that, you know, they had taken so many businesses and expanded them so much. And it's just been, it's been a great day. You know, I've seen a lot of people I know here, you know, we've seen people, you know, waving behind the camera. It's been fun. Yeah. And, you know, even though it's a, you know, a professional television show, it still gets the community involved because I've, I've had people, you know, waving at us and it's been nice. I see, I see my family walking up actually right now <laughs> as we're talking. So you'll see them pass in a bit, but uh, so it, it's just been, it's been so much fun today. And I wish that, you know, the show could go on forever and ever because this is this is what we enjoy doing and you know we're in the peak of our senior year we're getting there and you know our, our, our school year's starting and this is just this is the first obstacle for us yeah. in, in the studio so well, for one last time we are heading over to field reporter Haley Bardos who is with one of the many interesting vendors here at the festival thanks McLean interested in finding a trendy accessory to jazz up any outfit silk art designs has the trendiest accessories of them all Tell me a little bit about Silk Art Designs. Silk Art Designs is actually water marbling, and we do it on silk scarves and bandanas. It's actually an old Chinese 900-year-old technique that they've done. Um, we are now doing it on the bandanas and the scarves. And what you do is you would pick your, we have 15 different colors of dyes, and you pick a dye color. We're going to use two for the demonstration. And you he's going to do this and then we take a stick and then you create the design however you want it to look and then we take the hold on here we go he's getting it we take a we're going to use a paper towel but pretend it's a silk scarf or a bandana it immediately adheres to the fabric once we lay it in there and there you go and then we rinse it out for you, take it home, and tomorrow you would rinse it, let it dry, iron it so it gets soft, especially on the silk, and it's good for life. It doesn't fade, it doesn't wash away. You would just treat it like you do your, any silk scarf, or I mean silk item, I'm sorry. I got scarf on the mind. Well, I might have to but, come back later and try it out. It looks very well, neat. I would love for you to. Thank you. We're Thank really you so there. much. Thank you. Come on down to Silk Art Designs where you can wrap up and clothes that you make yourself. Back to you, Sydney. Thank you, Haley, for that interview. Now let's check in with Kaif Galani for yet another inside scoop. Kaif? Thanks, Sydney. Need something to help you relax during those busy weeks? Salt Soothers has the solution. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So, you know, what is the uh, reason that people should buy salt soothers rather than other bath salts? Well, our product is all natural. It has 12 different essential oils in it. It's very good for people with psoriasis and eczema. It's also excellent for diabetics. Okay, so how do you make these bath salts? Well, we can't really tell you how we make it, but it is made with Dead Sea salt from Israel, wow. along with 12 different essential oils, such as jojoba oil, grapeseed, tea tree, and avocado oil. Wow, so, you know, 
You're from Oklahoma. That's where your company is based. Why do you come all the way from Oklahoma just for this festival? Well, we talked to a lot of vendors because we do shows all over, and we heard that this was the festival to be at in the tri-state area, mm -hmm. and it has turned out to be a wonderful festival for us, so we will be back. What are some of the flavors that you have, or the varieties? We have four different scents available. We have Love Spell, which is very popular. We have Butt Naked. Um, we also have um, Blue Lagoon and Peppermint Eucalyptus. So what, what's the most popular one? Uh, butt Naked. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, if somebody wants to buy your product, but they can't make it out to the festival today, is there any way they can buy it? That's right. They can go to www.saltsoothers.com okay. to get our product. Thank you so much. So if you're looking for a way to relax, come to Salt Soothers for all your supple skin needs. Back to you, Sydney. Great information, Kate. Thank you. The Germantown Festival turned 43 this year. That's <laughs> a lot of memories for those who make this event, this event an annual tradition. Reporter Maggie Birchfield and videographer Sean Byrne spoke with some festival veterans about their favorite moments from years past. Frank Lamana has been on the Germantown Festival Publicity Committee for about 25 years, but he's been coming to the grounds for closer to 35. He's just one of many people who visits year after year, and he's one of many who have created fond festival memories. And when I started coming out here 35 years ago, I had my sons who were little kids, and now I've got their kids. I've got my grandkids coming out now, which is really amazing. And uh, we share the same experiences going on the rides, uh, <laughs> eating the food, uh, that sort of thing. So I guess the fact that the family's been involved all, over all these years has been, you know, has been great. Like Lamana, Trudy Steffen has been part of the Germantown Festival for many years. This is a major fundraiser for the Germantown Women's Club. Each member volunteers and it's something they look forward to. We're all community-minded people, but we really, we really like each other. We're this, some of my best friends I have made being in Germantown Women's Club. So as we know, the festival is about friends and family to people who come year after year. Here at the Germantown Commissary booth, it's about food. And as we also found out, heat plays a role in it too. But last year it was so hot, I literally passed out. You did? Just passed out in the back and everybody's like, oh my God, are you okay? And I'm like, it's so hot. Do you have a specific memory that was funny to you? Not really, probably that now yeah. that we can <laughs> laugh at about that, it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's been hot this year, and it even rained too. But the festival goes on despite the weather. For GHS-TV, I'm Maggie Birchfield. Thanks, Maggie. There's still time to come out to the Germantown Civic Club, Com Club Complex <laughs> and make a few festival memories for 2014. The grounds are open until 6 p.m. Our final interview today is with two of the most important figures of the festival. Melba Fristick, the coordinator of the Germantown Festival, and Howard Giffen, the, the chairman. Both Fristick and Giffen have worked tire tirelessly all year to once again put on an exceptional 43rd Germantown Festival. Well, thank you once again for coming on. Well, well, we thank enjoyed you. this. Thanks and for having us. Personally, this has been a wonderful festival so far. Personally, it's been a wonderful festival for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Right. That's fantastic. It's That's been great. great. Now, so, so tell me, um, Ms. Fristick, as coordinator, how specifically, how do you think festival's gone this year? Well, after yesterday's downpour, we survived that without a pitch. Yes. Uh -huh. Thanks to the city of Germantown, they had their workers out here with us this morning before daybreak, yeah. getting the grounds back together. This has been phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Even yesterday, we've had vendors come up. I had people renewing for next year wow. during the downpour last year, or last, mean, yesterday. That's phenomenal. And I think something that Cindy and I have been talking about is that you know, it really showed that, you know, Germantown is so supportive of the festival. I mean, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, while some people left because they, because they couldn't handle, you know, a little drizzle. I mean, a lot of people stayed. <laughs> a little you know, drizzle. You know, you know, but a lot of people stayed and just got under a tent yes. when it was done. We made lots kept of on shopping. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. I am sure. We met yeah. a bunch of new people. It was fun. <laughs> now, for both of you, I mean, obviously, this is, this is a huge event. So can you kind of tell me, uh, at what time of the year do you really start prepping? We've already started. Uh, believe oh it or gosh. not, we no sooner get open and we're already looking towards the next year because yeah. as you're putting it together, you find little things that you say, maybe we need to tweak that for next year. So you immediately, mm -hmm. you start writing things down, say, maybe we ought to look wow. into this, maybe we ought to look into that. There's still an hour left. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. that's right. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I've got a list already of things wow. that we just need to look at. That's all. Uh -huh. Wow. So, I mean, why does this festival attract so many great artisans and restaurants? and I mean just all the great things that go along with it. Reputation. 
-hmm. We have built 43 years of getting better every year. And our vendors are our wonderful spokespeople. They will go to other festivals, see someone say, well, I'll, you have really nice stuff. You ought to go to Germantown because that's one of the best. And people around here have learned to look for that weekend after Labor Day and mark it on their calendars. I have people calling me all summer wanting to know, is it going to be the first weekend or the second weekend? Because they're making plans. But we're always the weekend after Labor Day. So our reputation goes before us, and we just hope to keep building on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, tell me, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, this festival's been going on for 43 years now. Tell me, I mean, how has it evolved over the years? It started as a small festival called the, In the Pines. Okay. That's where the Methodist Hospital here in Germantown is, the corner of Poplar and Germantown Road. Mm -hmm. That's where it started. Okay. Then it progressed into like a street festival, and it was up Germantown Road from the Pines all the way up to uh, Poplar Pike. And then eventually we ended up moving back here where we had more grounds, and we turned it into a real arts and craft festival. Up to that time, it was just kind of a little bazaar out in the suburbs of Germantown, uh, that some of the people in Memphis didn't weren't sure where that was, and yeah. and that's kind of where it started, and wow. then it pro progressed into what you see here now, and we use that utilize almost every inch of space that we can out here. We, we're running out of space out here. Uh, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's it's about as big as we can get it right now. We yeah. just don't want to crowd things in. We try to oh, keep yeah. it comfortable to let mm -hmm. people know that they can come out and stroll around, stay oh, as yeah. long as they'd like. People come back from the day before and spend another day out here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so spaced out. I mean, but I remember being a little kid and being so annoyed at my mom because she was taking forever yeah. to get uh -huh. from this side to the other oh, side. Oh, yeah. I mean, because, right. it is, because it's so spacious. It is. But now you can go spend a lot of time on the games. You can sit the stage and watch all that go by and just come out and relax, have a good time. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, tell me, I mean, how, how does Germantown Festival benefit from Germantown and how does Germantown benefit from Germantown Festival? The city of Germantown benefits because this festival was really a showcase for Germantown. Mm -hmm. And the city realizes that, and the city helps us any way that they can. So the two of us work hand in hand. We benefit from what they do, they benefit from what we do. Uh, they, they love us, and we love them. Uh, it, it's just a, a great partnership. I mean, it really oh, is. It, it's just amazing how the cooperation is between the two groups. Yeah. So can you so can you kind of tell me what are some things that we should start expecting for next year? <laughs> well, <laughs> you said you're it's, ready. It's <laughs> We're getting that right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to say because uh, there's very few vendors in the food area or in the children's area mm -hmm. that don't renew. So mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we're cramped for space back there. So if one drops out, we immediately look for a replacement, and hopefully that mm -hmm. replacement will be something different. But we try to do everything different. Every food vendor is a different uh, menu that they have. They cannot have something on their menu that another food booth has. So every oh, wow. one of the food booths has something different. And they're all okay. non-profit groups. Every one of those food okay. vendor groups. Okay. You're not just buying a cord dog, you're buying from the Boy Scouts. Right. So they benefit from it so, so much. Yeah. So where do you see festival 10 years down the line? <laughs> <laughs> With our kids pushing us through it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it will still have a life of its own. This yeah. has become such a tradition that this is not just Germantown. This is the entire Mid-South. Mm -hmm. I've, I've talked to people that came up from Batesville. I've talked to people that have come in from Earl, Arkansas. Um, now, the vendors come from 12 different states. I have vendors from Colorado, Texas, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, all of them. But in total, uh -huh. I have more than 12 states this year. But the attendance is not just Germantown. We just want to show off Germantown. Of course. It's a show off time for us. <laughs> and uh, we draw people from everywhere. Wow. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for putting on a wonderful show. Yes, festival. thank you. Oh, we've thank enjoyed you. it. And we've enjoyed you being on the show. Well, thank <laughs> you. Yes. Appreciate it. I'd like to thank Miss, Miss Fristick and Mr. Giffen for coming on today. And another big thank you to the both of you for always putting on an amazing festival. Over the years, it has allowed so many of us to build strong memories of spending one weekend in September walking around the grounds with friends and family. Mm -hmm.